Constellation, Last Stand Media's conversational podcast, is brought to you by you. If you want to learn how to support our podcast network, head to patreon.com slash laststandmedia. Greetings and salutations. Welcome back to Constellation, Last Stand Media's conversational podcast. My name is Colin Moriarty. I'm joined as always by my brother, Dagan Moriarty. Dagan, welcome. How are you today, my friend? Oh, hi. Doing good. Look at this gang. Look at I this know. squad. I know. Enough of, enough from you. Let's get right into it. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. I've already had it with we myself. Have, people requested, <laughs> Dig, that we bring these two people together on this show. They really wanted to see it. We made it happen like that but really they made it happen because they made time in their schedules really really appreciate them so let's go one at a time we'll start with gene gene park of the washington post wearing his smith shirt so he's simpatico with us the moriarty bros so this isn't even the dismiss shirt it's the smith (laughs) 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 what so for people listening on audio it's not oh you're you're missing one though yeah it's not the band that you know and love it's it's, no no uh, i mean you're missing one of the one of the smith Smith families yep where's the guy she was fucking (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> i forgot his name already he's on the back of the shirt oh that <laughs> would be amazing <laughs> yeah that's a wonderful shirt for, for the audio he's wearing uh, gene's wearing a smith shirt you know like you would think it was the 80s um band band but it's actually the smith family from uh let me, let me, let me go. it is <laughs> yeah there's jada will yeah Jane it's the real smith family yeah will yes. else, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god I love it. Well, Gene, welcome to the show, my friend. Good to see you, as hey, always. Captain. Thank you for having me. You're very welcome. And uh, the other man you hear is David Jaffe. Hello, fellas. Game creator, uh, doing whatever he does every day. Appreciate uh-huh. you being here today, my friend. How are you? I'm very good. I am, uh, you know, listen, man, I, uh, I, I, I didn't really get into the pot until recently, about a couple of years back. And so yesterday was 420, obviously. Mm-hmm. And even though it's not an official holiday, it is one with me and I'm, you know, I know you're not supposed to have a pod hangover. People say, oh, that doesn't happen. That's just alcohol. But I have, I get hit real hard. Mm. So I'm good. I'm glad to be here, but I'm absolutely reeling from uh, the edibles I was eating last night while playing Resident Evil online and I doing something. Oh, we played Dead Island too as well online. So it was, it was fun, but now I'm paying the price. How is uh, Dead Island too? You like it? Um, you know, it reminds so far it's like, uh, the best way I can describe it is it's like final fight in 3d in an open world. It's mm-hmm. very silly and fun and the violence is wonderful. And the people who are giving it like a seven out of 10, I think are spot on. It feels very much like a good matinee B game. Um, that's just a lot of fun, but it's not gonna, it's not gonna stick to your bones <laughs> like the zombie. <clears throat> it's, uh, it's, it's, um, it's good though. I like it. Gene, have you played it? Uh, no, I was a big fan of Dead Island 1 though. Um, so I'm actually excited to play Dead Island 2. The final fight in, in first person, you know, cause you're just like picking up weapons and you're just punching right. the hell out of zombies. That sounds pretty accurate to Dead Island 1. So that's, yeah, that, that, and that there's sounds all the crafting and, me, and there's you know? co-op and there, you know, there's more, to, there's a little more fleshed out, but I, I like it. I don't know if I like it for 70 bucks, but mm-hmm. hell, hell, well, it's not a game podcast, but I was also playing the crash game yesterday that just came out and I'm like, you guys charging 30 bucks for that? Really? Okay. Oh, rumble verse or whatever. The hell yeah. It, no, rumble. Yeah. Uh, crash team rumble. It's really rumble. good. It's really well made, but it's, I think it's dead on arrival. I mean, they want 30 bucks for just the basic pack and it's online only. There's one mode. It's really fun, but it's not very sticky. So after about maybe five matches, I was good. Um, so I don't know what's up with that one. Toys for Bob is one of my favorite developers, but I don't I don't know what they're doing with that game. So, well, seem to be Xbox Studio. That's hope so. Hope Toys so. for Bob. But um, well, it's good to see you guys. And I appreciate you taking the time to be here. Uh, talk to us today. We have a, 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 a litany of topics. Good ones. We set, started, Dagan usually starts an email every week and then we usually get it around everyone. Everyone says what they're going to talk about. And uh, I'm going to pull an unusual move. I think I've only done this a few times. I might have even done it a week or two ago, but I'm going to go first this week because I want to, I really am curious to, I usually let myself go last, but I want to go first this week because I just want to get this out of the way. And I just want to ask you guys how you're feeling about subscription services today. 
that can mean anything. I mean, it could be your Netflix. It could be your Spotify. It could also be like your meal thing, your meal box. Oh, sure. I don't know. And this comes to mind for me, guys, because I didn't know what I was going to talk about this week. But then um, and Gene, I think you went through it in quotes, too. We lost our blue check marks right yep. on Twitter. <laughs> sure. And um, I personally feel I, I think a lot of it out there. I think Dustin actually uh, tweeted about it being like a lot of it is like the 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 meme the wojack meme of the smiling but you're crying underneath the mask or whatever the smile like a lot of people are upset about it i must admit i feel truly unencumbered Mm -hmm. i've been waiting for this moment because i've wanted to change my name for so long and i finally did um and you can't change your name if you have a check because then you you like bounce it you know lose it and i'm like well i don't want to like lose my free check but i'm certainly not going to pay for a check Mm -hmm. and this is where subscription services and my idea of, of talking about this came from i feel like it's and I think this is a common thought, but my thought is that this is getting out of control in some way. Um, now, Last Stand is itself a subscription service, so I'm 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 taking a shot at ourselves as well. But I think people, I think companies are taking it too far. I would like to see more like consortiums and more groups getting together and trying to like lower the cost and lower the cost of everything for people. But Twitter really just brought up to me. It's like I'm not paying for this. I'm just not paying for this. I, it's I'm not one of these people that's going to judge you for paying for your blue check or whatever. It's like, whatever. I don't care about any of that. I just refuse to pay for something so demonstrably bad for me. And um, so I just wanted to throw that out there for you guys. Uh, Gene, let's start with you. I'm curious. How are you feeling about subscription services lately? What are you? Sub- and this is what I also want to know from all of you as we go around the, the horn. What do you subscribe to these mm-hmm. days? I want to know, like, what, what's going on? What are your monthly bills looking like in terms of of all these different? Because I'm I'm I try to be really neat about it but i find myself surprised too that i'm actually spending so much on this shit too so what what strikes you when this topic comes up gene yeah this is a unique topic because i am also in the subscription service business uh with the washington post the oldest kind of subscription service right Uh, subscribing to a newspaper or a news organization or a media organization um well i'll answer your last question about what i'm subscribed to Uh, i'm currently subscribed to hbo max because i am uh, absolutely loving the tv show succession uh, I'm very late on that. I don't know if you guys have, have seen that. I watched only the first season, but it was awesome. And I, I'd like to get back to it. Yeah, it's incredible. I, I'm, I'm all caught up now. I'm, I'm ready for Sunday's episode. Uh, I subscribe to Netflix just because like it just it's just good to have in the background. And my mom uses it mostly. Uh, I'm obs- subscribed to Xbox Game Pass, although I'm not sure why, because there's nothing new coming out. And I've already played all the games that they already have. Um, it's, like, it's not like Netflix that has a vast ocean of of content. Uh, Xbox Game Pass, there's a limit. I either, I either already played all of it or I don't really feel like playing it. So like the decisions already made there. Um, but, you know, I'm just subscribing to it because I cover games, right? And I'm mm. interested in the, the ecosystem. Um, and I think that's about it. I, I subscribe to Last Time Media. Uh, I, I am Thank a Patreon you. subscriber. You are the only, you guys are the only Patreon uh, sub I've had. I had one before, uh, but uh, you guys are basically the only one. Thank and, you. And uh, I don't subscribe to any social. Oh, I subscribe to YouTube Premium mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. because I watch, uh, I think you guys talked about it before. I watch more YouTube than I consume in any other type of content. <laughs> I oh, me that. too. Me too. Um, and if I could just spend 16 bucks a month to just have an ad free experience, it's absolutely completely worth it i don't even think about like i just dive into store the videos no problem it's ama- amazing and also i subscribe to three twitch channels uh, uh i try to, to just keep them only the that 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 in itself is already like 18 bucks right uh it's the po- it's my favorite gaming podcast sorry last uh, sorry That's sacred symbols okay. uh castle super beast uh run by my friends willie and pat and uh I subscribe to Pat's Twitch channel, and I subscribe to Susie the Sphere Hunter, who's a Resident Evil creator uh, and, and a good friend. Oh of yeah, yeah, I've seen, yeah, cool. Yeah. Uh, so, how so, are you feeling about like the value of them to uh, the subscriptions to your life? Like, do you, we all come from the a la carte world, right? So, like, we we well remember we're all old. Um, do you feel like you're being serviced by like served well by these um by these different subscriptions? Because I think that's what I'm coming up against is like, what am I even getting? at this point yeah i mean the youtube premium is absolutely worth it uh it's Mm -hmm. kind of it's kind of dumb that it has to be an ad-free experience but you know you know it's 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 worth it because there's so many gundam ads on youtube uh hbo is temporary i'm only doing it until i finish succession until the season is over and then once it's over uh, you know the only reason why i still had is because of the last of us right um and i decided well i still got just like you said connor uh, colin uh that 
you theorize that they only had it, uh, what, 10 episodes because they kind of lock you in for the rest of the month. Uh, before right. You- I just say it was just like a conspiracy theory. I always think the worst of every corporation. But so. it worked. It worked for me, though. Like, like yeah. what, if, if, if that was what they were trying to do, it worked because I was like, OK, well, I might as well check out Succession then because everyone keeps talking about it. And then my girlfriend told me that it's a comedy. And I was like, I did not know that it's actually a funny show. Uh, so if you market it that way to me, then I would be vastly interested. And I, I watched it from the first second. I was like, OK, this is awesome. Um. The Netflix subscription, I'm not sure I, I get a lot of value about it, but but my mom watches it, so I'm mostly paying for her to, to watch mm. it. Um, and that's about it. Uh, you know, I don't subscribe to... I do pay attention to sex work subscription services uh, because a lot of those are very... The, the, the economy that they have there is is a preview of what would be happening in the wider internet, right? Uh, like everything about Twitch mm-hmm. tips and everything like that mm-hmm. started happening on sites like Chatterbait or MyFreeCams.com or whatever, uh, webcam girls are, who are stripping on camera. And I would observe those <laughs> this is like like, like this is, this is like, like like oh I read Playboy for the articles right yeah. uh, this is a modern day yeah. I read Playboy for the articles but I observe them because I, I'm interested in their behavior and how the, how they, they I'm interested able to in get... their behavior too Jim. <laughs> <laughs> I am interested in how the economy works and and how they're able to basically lure all these guys to basically pay whatever an enormous amounts of money. For them to to have this like weird parasocial relationship where they where you think that they're, they're your pretend online girlfriend or whatever. Um, Wait, what you, weren't, weren't they saying recently that like, some of these some of these big cam girls and OnlyFans like people that. like they have dudes basically running all of the messaging and stuff like oh, that? Yeah. It's so funny. Oh, totally, it's so fucking totally. weird. Totally. Uh, and and I only know this because I actually started an OnlyFans for my friend, and I was doing I, I was also doing the messaging, and I was like flirting with flirting with dudes and everything. Like that. It's, it's hilarious. <laughs> the it's, that's amazing. I love it. It's that. husbands it's a lot, like husbands and boyfriends and stuff that do it. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Take it on as the administrator. I personally find that totally pathetic, but I'm not even going to get it's into. Yeah, it's craziness. It's, it's, yeah, it's crazy. It's, like 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 I like I like they were pathetic to me. I felt pathetic re- responding to them, and you know my my uh, my friend also didn't. Feel like wanting to do it because it's a lot of work to just you know strip online or whatever so she gave up on that and that's the only reason why i have an only fans account um <laughs> but uh yeah subscription ser- I have so many thoughts to think about subscription services you know I, i've been working in newspaper business uh, since 2003 so yeah 20 years this year um it's it's a tough business as xbox is finding out you know like you have to have constant interesting content um, you look at what's happening in the media, uh, look at BuzzFeed news, which is mm-hmm. which literally just completely shut down yesterday. Right. They have Pulitzers and everything. Yeah, mm-hmm. they got they, they won a Pulitzer. They were nominated for a Pulitzer. Uh, they did pretty good work. They were they were they were spreading internationally. They were stealing reporters from The New York Times and The Washington Post back then. Um, and now they're just done. They're dead. It's dead in the water. It's done. That's it. Uh, because the ad base uh, network wasn't working. Uh, the ad base service wasn't working. Um, but they weren't a subscription service, but there's, there's still trouble on the, the, the subscription side. You know, even the Washington Post, uh, we, we lost subscribers. We lost a couple hundred thousand subscribers. Uh, most of them were uh, with us during the Trump era. You know, uh, we gained a lot of we gained a lot of uh, subscribers during then. And then after Trump went away or people just got bored of the Trump news cycle, um, they just they after after the election was stolen. No. <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty much like after January 6th and at all the hubbub then, uh, you know, because January 6th was a local story. Right. For mm-hmm. us. Um, and we did great coverage then. And then after uh, pretty much after that, it started sinking because people's interest in politics were, were, were dropping. Um, so we had to figure out a way to to try to retain uh, subscribers and uh you know, if you want to ask my opinion of it, uh, I know you haven't asked, but like, I think, you know, it's a lot of it is based on like personalities, you know, the, mm-hmm. even millennials, like, like more liberal millennials will say, you, you know, you shouldn't be loyal to a company, your company, you're just number to your company, which is true. Uh, you know, in companies, you always say, oh, we're like a family here. But, you know, like that, that could be a little bit of a toxic positive positivity kind of thing, uh, just to encourage you to feel like you are you owe the company something, but you really don't. Uh, but at the same time, uh, that's, that's, it, it, it goes back to who is loyal to a company, you know? 
what kind what kind of company are you loyal to? I guess Nintendo probably, and then, and then there's also Disney maniacs, right? Sure. And then there's also yeah. you know PlayStation fans and Xbox fans, but. You know, would you really pay a sports fans? I guess sports, right? Sports, right? sports yeah, too, anything. absolutely. Sports too. You know, uh, but yeah, it, 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 it's there's just a lot. There's just that, you're right. There's just so much subscription services going on, and it's like we're all competing for the same dollar. Mm-hmm. You know, so that's why I keep trying to repeat to the Washington Post, and I've been saying this for years, is that our competitor is not New York Times. It's Netflix, it's Fortnite battle passes, it's Warzone, Warzone battle passes, it's all these, it's Patreon, Patreon podcasts, you know, and we're trying to price the, the our newspaper in kind of the same realm. And it's like, well, what are we offering though? What kind of, how are we engendering loyalty? So those are well, kind problem, of the things. problem with newspapers, and I love newspapers, but the problem with newspapers is they're still in the cable model. I know they're a subscription mm-hmm. service, but for every article I read, there's probably 20 in the same day's issue that i don't read yeah and so it, it's just like you know you're you know, i do pay for the new york times but it's just like you know how much of it do i actually consume every single day um and i know they've broken it up into certain chunks mm-hmm. that you can subscribe to like oh if you want the cooking chunk right, it's a right. little bit extra exactly but yes i'm just kind of like i you know it, it to me it feels like there it, it is a i still love good journalism and i'm happy to pay for good journalism but it does feel like the model of a the newspaper itself feels a little antiquated because there's so much like it's like old cable. It's like I don't want to watch 90 percent of the channels I've got. Mm-hmm. Um, so kind of like the same thing with with the news, you know, so on the Internet, I can just go get what I want and move on. Yeah, yeah. And the New York Times has had a right because they created this whole a la carte type subscription service. You know, if you want to just have the cooking and the, the, and the cooking really and the recipes is really what what, what drove them super high up you know uh, they, they skyrocketed the, the, during that move and then they, they also bought wordle you know right uh, uh they're, they're getting they're actually kind of slowly dipping their toes into like game service which is interesting yeah you know? it's very interesting yes yeah and they have so, an editor now there's a wordle editor just like there's a crossword puzzle editor it's exactly. crazy exactly <laughs> that's crazy you know but i mean that's good that goes back to the the, the the sense of what a newspaper used to be it used to be the, yeah. the all kinds of things you know you get your advertisement you get your grocery store coupons get your sports news in the back and a lot of people would just go go to the sports pages first back in the day you get right. your comics and cartoons and then you get your, your your local news you know and your government news uh but that no longer exists anymore because so much of that is online and so much of that was was shattered through social media yeah. um but yeah i could talk for hours and hours about this mm-hmm. it's so, fascinating yeah yeah what what talk to me jeffy i mean what, what what's going on with you and subscriptions oh, how you feeling well, okay about well you? first let me just yeah. say and again i don't i i don't i saw a documentary on only fans on hulu a while back and my first step was to go to the internet and type in onlyfans.com because i'm like oh I want to see who, what's this Vegas buffet of sex? What can, you know, and I was surprised. Oh, I'm a behavior, that, a bit behavior appreciator. Yes. <laughs> I, 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 yeah, I was, I was, I was, uh, I was surprised to learn though, that it, it, it really is a kind of a bizarre place because I didn't know you have to actually know the only fans name and all this stuff. I thought you'd go there and it would be like, Oh, what are you into? I'm into right, this. Right. And I like, you know, and so I've never really dipped my toe into that. But what I will say is I will push back a little bit on the, uh, the, the cam girl shaming, uh, that you guys were doing earlier, um, about it being pathetic or, or whatever. I mean, I, I just, I, I don't know if it's an age thing or just, becoming aware of, of, of just where we're at in the world right now. But man, I, I, anything anybody can do to get some relief and to get some joy and to get some happiness. I think we do such gatekeeping in this society for the, for the, really for the corporations, for the marketing uh, without even being paid to do it, where it's like, this is acceptable. This is not, you're a loser. If you do this, you're a, you're a winner. If you do this and, Oh, you have to, you you have to get your sexual satisfaction right now from a, a virtual relationship. And it's like, who, you know, some people, some people just can't win. Some people just can't <laughs> fucking win. And I, I think it's wrong to just push those people into the margins and say they're, they're, they're shameful because I think a it's cruel well, and B yeah. it's, it's just more piling on in our society of like, you know, you have to fit this model. And if you don't, you're a loser. And I just think that's really bad. I want to say, because I didn't want to interrupt you, but to clarify what I meant, Mm -hmm. I meant 
that the husbands and boyfriends that do it for their women yeah. are. Yeah, pathetic. I thought that's what you mean. It's going that's to the strip want, club from your oh, home. That's really right, what which, it is. So I well, I just wanted to be clear. Like, I okay. think that that's kind of like I know some people call that simping and all that. I just think that that's so <laughs> weird that you would want to commodify your, your partner um, because I, I I wanted you to go on because I actually agree with you. I, I've been open. I, I've gone to strip clubs and not mm-hmm. really in, in my 30s, but I've I've gotten lap dances. I've put money in the girls G strings. I've, yeah. you yeah. know, I've done yeah. that in Mexico. I've done that in California. I've done that, in, you know, and it's and in Vegas, obviously, it gets out of control. I've I've long been a pro- proponent of legalizing prostitution. I've never been with a prostitute, but I, I, I think a, that, that should be a to, person. I went to a sex worker in Vegas. I never I got I got divorced, and I was like, you know what? I I've always wanted to go to that bunny ranch place in the desert. <laughs> oh wow, <laughs> awesome! Yeah, was, yeah and, and and so I went out to Vegas, and you know I gambled and had a good time and everything. And then I'm like, one night I'm just like, I'm going to drive out there now. First of all, let me tell you real quick. I, I was terrified because there's no lights on that fucking road in the middle of the night. And so you are just going on faith <laughs> oh, uh, shit. Because and horniness, see, and horniness, faith and well, horniness. Yeah, yeah, right. Well, yeah, coming back, though, it's worse because you're like, well, I'm done. Yeah, now. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, you know, you're literally you can I'm not exaggerating, literally like three feet in front of your car. And when you look in your rearview mirror, it's just like wow. a piece of poster board black put over wow. your, your back window. And you're just like. I hope, you know, Jesus take the wheel because, uh, you know, I don't know what's going to happen. But anyway, I did go out there and I did do that. And it was a lot. It was really interesting, A, because, you I know, bet. well, yeah, because, you know, the women are they're like, look, you know, it, it's it's as as it is legal and it's as safe as you're going to get. And as if you're a worker, I assume there's benefits or it's better than working on the street. And you go to this saloon area. And then they, the, the madam or whatever they're called these days has all the girls that are available come in and you're literally just having drinks with them and talking, going, Hmm, this one, this one, this one, this one. I picked one. Uh, It's total commodity. I picked one and we went off and we did the thing. Um, And it was really cool. I mean, it wasn't like, Oh my God, it was life changing, but I'm glad I can go to the grave going. I had done that experience. Yeah. Solo mission Jaffe. You went by yourself. I went to Vegas with friends, but I went to that by By myself myself. because I also like the strip clubs. I would go to the strip clubs. We would go for E3 with Sony and all the Sony execs and stuff like, let's go out to the strip club. And like, and I went, the last thing I want to do is be sitting next to the head of marketing, getting a lap dance. Right. (laughs) I'm like, well, this is awkward. It's like, you know, how's the twisted metal numbers doing? You know, (laughs) it's just weird, man. But anyway, uh, (laughs) So subscription services, though. Um, yeah, yeah, this is a fascinating topic on the, the conversation on subscription services. But yeah. right, 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 right. Well, they they should have sex worker subscription services. It's like every month you get a you know, whatever. So pretty the much do you being, just hit up the same one? That's it, you know. Yeah, I know, but it's got to be you know packaged so I get like free HBO with it or something. But oh, anyway, okay. Um, okay. So what subscription services do I own? I own tons of them. Or own I subscribe to tons of them. So I do have Spotify. I have YouTube. Premium, which I cannot, I agree with Gene, cannot speak highly enough about. It's delightful. So worth it. Um, I have HBO. I have Netflix. I have Hulu. I have Peacock. I have Paramount Plus. I have Amazon Prime. Jesus. Uh, I subscribe to Last Stand Media. Um, I subscribe to the New York Times. Uh, I subscribe to probably six or seven AI things that help me with my content. Certainly open AI with ChatGPT4. Oh, yeah. Um, but then I also subscribe to like, you know, there's a new one out now that, uh, will take your two hour video and it'll audit, sorry, Dustin, it'll automatically, it's brilliant. It uses AI and it'll chunk it up into what it thinks are good segments. And then Mm. if you approve it and you can kind of tweak it a little bit and then you, it'll just send it out to Instagram or YouTube or all the places that you want to promote your shit. Dustin's done. yeah, <laughs> Dustin, he's so fucking done. Um, he's he's standing out for good. That's it. <laughs> that, that's right. You hear something? It does. Okay. So anyway, um, I uh, uh, so I subscribe to a lot. Um, I love subscription services. I, I was a kid of cable, and again, it's like all we ever complained about is why am I spending a hundred dollars and hundred and twenty bucks a month on cable when I only watch three channels? Right. And now it's like, well here here and so i think really a big problem with the subscription and and i know in europe uh there was a law that was passed and it may have already gone into effect where uh they they did a lot of great things for 
pro-consumer for digital uh, in the last couple of years. But I think one of them was they have to make it super easy to unsubscribe, even to the point that I think it's like it automatically will unsubscribe and you have to opt in every month or something. Mm. There's like there are there are changes on the when in Europe and even I'm hearing in America about just making it easier because I look at it and I say, unless you are in one of those services and they have existed, but it's gotten better where they make it intentionally difficult to unsubscribe. And the New York Times, by the way, for a very long time was one of those. They can go fuck themselves. They're better now, but they were horrible. Mm -hmm. It was like finding fucking Jimmy Hoffa was easier than fucking, you know, unsubscribing. (laughs) Um, But, but, um, Unless you're talking about one of those, it really is a you, not a you, Colin or a Dagan or a Gene problem, but it's a, it, it's a personal problem. It's like, you know, subscription services are easy enough to unsubscribe. I can go right now to Hulu and go bloop. And if you choose not to do that, like Gene is saying, when, when HBO, uh, I'm sorry, when Max is, uh, <laughs> is done, uh, you know, when succession is over and whatever, um, you're just going to hit a click check mark and it's done for the moment. Yep. Um, I think with that, I think it's, the, you know, I think it's the person's problem. I think that's really an odd, um, an, a, it's weird to have people complaining when it's so easy not to have the thing that you're complaining about exist in your life. Yeah. I, I think that's, it's well put. I also have to say, I have to admit with the cable, box thing i have all these things and then i still have the fucking cable box oh, oh Lord. you gotta cut yeah. the te- you gotta cut the tether man there's one thing that keeps me involved and it's live sports yeah. like yeah. you can't, you can't i'm a huge hulu, sports though. fan and you well, i'm sorry you can get live tv on all these services hulu has i have live tv and it's on hulu, hulu yeah. like live bro like net like yeah. local broadcast uh, tv the i have to look into that because yeah because yeah we probably because i have comcast and so we get our cable internet through them which is fine yeah. it's actually really good and then, yeah, so we have the cable package through M2. And I want to say it costs me probably another hundred and something dollars mm-hmm. a month wow. because I I feel hamstrung by just live sports, like just being trying to figure out how I'm not going to miss a football game or how I'm not like a Do hockey. Do you only game. watch right specific teams? Hockey. I'm sorry. Do you only watch specific teams? No, I'll watch like any NFL. Well, I do, but I only watch. I'll watch any NFL or NHL game that's on TV too. Like wait, gotcha. the playoffs are on right now, and I'll watch all the NHL playoff games like that are on. If if I just want to stick around and watch TV, so there's that. And it's what's frustrating about that though, Jaffe, is that in addition to that, because I do watch specific teams like the Islanders. I have my, mm-hmm. my Islanders sweatshirt on right now, and the and specifically the Jets. Um, in football, is that I also pay for Sunday ticket. Right. And right. I pay for the NHL package and I just bought Sunday ticket. So YouTube has Sunday ticket now, which is awesome. Oh, that's cool. So for people that don't know, Sunday ticket is this thing that was started by direct TV in 1994 on satellite. And wow. it was the, it was like this revolutionary thing where you could watch any football game you wanted, which like was unheard of because you would usually be tethered to your local CBS, Fox, whatever affiliate and whatever the local game was. And then they had this thing locked down for 29 years, like with renewal after renewal after renewal and people tried to get involved and finally someone broke through and YouTube paid an exorbitant amount of money or Google paid an exorbitant amount of money and I just signed up and it's 350 bucks and that's with a hundred dollars off if you do it before wow. June 6. Oh my God. So the sun so it's now gonna be 450 bucks and then you still have to keep the cable box or get your Hulu TV or whatever because right. you need the Sunday night games which are blacked out the Monday night games are blacked out all those kinds of things Thursday wow. night games then you need to have and you need to have Amazon Prime for which I do for the Thursday mm-hmm. night games and NFL network for the Thursday night games. So this is the point I like I'm unable mm-hmm. and dig as we kick it over to you. I'll say this. Yeah, I try to be as judicious as possible and just making sure I'm not wasting money. I can afford and we all can afford the subscriptions we want. I think that's a that's one of the parts of being of having a little bit of money. And I appreciate that. But I don't want to waste money for no reason. And so I really try to account for what I'm doing. And so like I'll go in Peacock and I'll watch what I want to do and then I'll cancel it. Like when we were doing Battlestar Galactica, I had Peacock and then I just canceled it. I was like, I don't I don't need this. But then there are ones where like Netflix, I don't watch Netflix almost ever. But I've had a Netflix subscription since 2004. Mm -hmm. Just just straight up. Yeah. By the way, they just got rid of DVDs completely. I heard And then their gaming services is really good on their mobile. Their gaming is is awesome, by the way. Yeah. And they're releasing Oxen free, too. Um, Mm -hmm. Which uh, and people, it's so funny because I one of you guys said before that, you know, it's Microsoft and Netflix are like looking at each other as competitors. And I think it was Rick Hogue that really had the insight that the reason that Oxen Free isn't coming to Xbox is not because of any anything other than that they want to disclose or they want to foreclose on Game Pass because they're going to be competing with it. Mm-hmm. So you see all these different things 
um, percolating. And then I have Amazon Prime because I buy things from Amazon on a constant bit. The Amazon delivery yeah. person might as well move in yeah. um, to my house. But then I have other a few other subscriptions. I just wrote them down. So you got the NFL and NHL stuff. Um, YouTube, of course, I, I'm it's a kind of I think you guys have probably noticed that it's a joke amongst a lot of circles about having a YouTube premium account. Like, who the fuck would have YouTube premium? Oh, and I'm like, are you insane? So like, yeah. Yeah. my fiance, Micah, who you, you all know, she watches YouTube. She watches a lot of stuff on their game grumps and other things. And it's like, how many ads are you going to watch? <laughs> I don't like I, fr- I almost forget that there are ads on YouTube. So so there's to- YouTube totally right now. I have HBO, although I'll probably cancel it soon. I'm trying to get through a few things and then I'll get rid of that. PBS. For the documentaries, I have that going right now. One consistent one is Spotify. Mm. Sure. Um, yeah. And I've had Spotify probably for 12 or 13 years or something like that at this point. It's just so fucking good. And the thing I say about Spotify is that it is so cheap. Mm-hmm. I have no clue how they get off even charging that little. In fact, I would support them doubling or tripling their price if it would be fair to the artists, especially because I, I know and love so many musicians. And then finally, we were talking about the New York Times. I subscribe to The Athletic since the very beginning of that mm-hmm. publication. That's like a very mm-hmm. boutique sports publication. It's awesome until The New York Times bought them. And then I cancel it. I'm like, nope, want nothing to do with The New York Times. And we're going to talk about that later when we get the Jaffe's topic. And then I try to find my individual creators that I follow. And, and actually, Sam Harris was one of them, the political mm-hmm. commentator. But he he actually... I try to give people great latitude in what they say and do because I expect people to give me some latitude too and not judge me completely. But he has fallen off the deep end so badly. He lost that, you. Oh, yeah. I'm like, I'm out. <laughs> because the, he like went, he doubled down, tripled down, quadrupled. I'm like, fuck this. I'm out. So I actually canceled that subscription. Um, but I try to give like little bits of money to people here and there because that's what they do to uh, for us too. Mm-hmm. And so it's not about like the, being anti-subscription service because it's to the point Jaffe was making where it's like very convenient and it's like what we always kind of wanted, right? Like how mm-hmm. can you complain about what you would always wanted? But I do think it's snuck up on people where it's actually costing more sure. than they thought it would. And I think these companies, you know, and Dave, let's kick it over to you. We haven't heard from you. I'm sorry. It's like Hulu always comes to mind for me because I could be crazy. But I'm pretty sure Hulu, the idea behind Hulu is that a consortium of networks were going to get together and Mm -hmm. do a subscription service. Yes. So it seemed like they were going to compete with Netflix. And then they're like, ah, no, fuck it. And then a bunch of people divested from it to where it's like its own thing now. It's so frustrating to me. And and so it is costing me an arm and a leg for all this stuff, even though I try to monitor it as closely as I can. So what how do subscriptions play a role in your life? Yeah, I know Disney still owns a stake in Hulu, but it seemed like a lot of the other players you know, decided to pull out or whatever. Yeah, this is an interesting interesting time to be having this conversation, I feel like, because I feel like the subscription services, it's still a little bit of the Wild West, but it's also in full swing now. You can't argue that. They seem to be committed now to this template of, you know, if you're avid enough, you subscribe. If you're extra avid, you go in for the souped up version. So you could go in for the base model. You could pay more for the souped up version. That's going to be the model we're committed to. So it's it's definitely, from a capitalistic perspective, they're definitely cashing in, right? And for the souped up version, you know, whatever that is for that thing, commercial free, you get the full whack, access to the additional 30%. Oh. Whoa. The full whack. <laughs> whatever it is, right? So, yeah. and not just- Alexa, with, what is the full whack? The full whack is like the 110%. You get everything. Gotcha. Right. You get the whole you get the whole the whole kit and caboodle. Right. So and I, I'm thinking a lot about this conversation, of course, with the TV movie end of things. But, you know, like you guys were mentioning video games. I know with myself for PlayStation Plus, loot boxes, yes, right. plus, that's one. meal yeah. services, music, all that kind of stuff. I realized probably when we were doing we don't do it anymore, but we were doing Blue Apron for a while for the better part of mm-hmm. a year probably the first year of the pandemic. And then I realized that even those meal subscription services have attached sort of companies that are like the lesser than version, the not name brand version. So Blue Apron was expensive, although I like the service. And then we realized they have a thing called, I think it's called Every Plate, which is kind of like the toned down, slightly cheaper version of Blue Apron. But it was basically the same thing. You just didn't get that name brand package you know the prestige version on your porch you got the you got the every plate so you had to suffer the embarrassment of i i have the ghetto version 
or whatever, but everything has that. It's like know? getting the, the cheese sandwich at school when you couldn't <laughs> afford the lunch. And it's like, here's the cheese sandwich. <laughs> we knew that was free or yeah. that cost 30 cents instead of 75 right. cents or whatever. But <laughs> you know, with the subscription services, I was thinking about this a lot last night because I finally tuned into that new series on Netflix, uh, Beef, because I knew David mm. Cho was going to be in it. So that was the draw for me. And it was really nice to watch a series, highly recommended, that's not, that's really excellently done, but is not on HBO, you mm. know? And I own, you know, between me and the wifey and the two kids, we own, it'll be much shorter for me to, to name the ones we don't go in for. I think the only ones we don't subscribe to are Paramount Plus, and that's because I work for the company and I feel like I should get it for free. So I very, I'm a curmudgeon with that. And I love you, Nickelodeon, but I really should get it for free. So I'm not going to buy that. In fact, I had to buy Top Gun Maverick on Amazon. And I was so angry about that. I was like, come on, I just want this one for free. So that's the only reason I don't have Paramount Plus because it's actually a good one. Mm-hmm. And AMC Plus because I'm not interested in The Walking Dead. Although I would like to have access to Mad Men. That's the only thing I would really buy that for. So that one could stay off. And then I don't do ESPN Plus, although it would probably make sense for me to bundle it with Disney and Hulu because I'd be paying practically nothing for it. So I have to look into that. And I think the only one I don't own besides that is Discovery Plus, which I hear is very good for reality TV, which my wife loves. But that's merging with Max, by the way. Oh, that's coming in with HBO now. Oh, I didn't, yes. know, I didn't yeah. know that. Oh, that's interesting. The one thing you guys were saying that doesn't speak to me is ever canceling HBO. I just don't understand because I know it's a little on the pricey side compared to the other ones, but the level of content, not only for the HBO originals dating back decades now, but also for the selection of movies, they tend, if you're a movie buff, if you're a real cinephile, they curate collections by director. They do really cool things. So I never, I think I flirted with canceling HBO Max once, maybe after Game of Thrones ended. And then I almost immediately wanted to go back and watch Curb or The Wire or something. And I was like, oh, forget it. This isn't, I'll always go back, watch True Detective season one. There's always something to go back and enjoy Sopranos for the upteenth time, whatever it is. So So I really do generally enjoy the subscription services. But one thing dawned on me recently is that it seems like it's getting to the point. Now, I finally severed the cord from traditional cable like two months ago after much sort of deliberating between Helene and I. Like, do we finally get rid of this? Do we finally cut the ties? She really likes the DIY channels and stuff. But we said, you know what? There's probably a way to get everything you're interested in right now if you just kind of search it out. So... We finally cut the ties and we don't miss it, but it does seem like we're in an era now where at least cost wise and maybe even a little bit of the availability of content short of the creator driven original stuff that Netflix, Hulu, Apple TV, um, HBO and everything put out. Maybe short of that proprietary content where it feels like the height of the on-demand cable era, like maybe dating back to the late aughts, early 2010s. Doesn't feel that much different. Cost-wise, variety-wise, short of those TV originals, you know, the Stranger Things and everything like that. That's really, that's really the only aspect that seems new still, besides knowing that you're getting raked over the coals because you're being, the, you know, the come-ons for the best version of the thing. Like you guys were saying with YouTube, I know it started with YouTube Red, it, w- it used to be uh-huh. called. And that that's was, right. be- I got that for Cobra Kai because Cobra Kai yeah, before Netflix grabbed shit. it, right? Mm, and then show. YouTube Red became YouTube Premium, I think. But mm. it's also, but that's under YouTube TV or whatever it's yeah, called. Yeah, they now. basically abandoned their original programming for the most part. And then yeah. went into more linear style. They realized they didn't have to, but there's three <clears throat> tiers, not just two. Right. right. Like, uh, so with the NFL Sunday ticket thing, uh, if you actually have YouTube TV, you get a hun- another hundred dollars off. Mm. So, so they're trying to court people with that as well. Okay. I, so did, I didn't do that, but yeah, that's interesting. That's I should really, probably do it. That, you know what? The only other thing that bothers me, I didn't know if you guys 
thought about this too, but from a marketing sort of brand creative strategy point of view, why does everything have to be plus? It's so fucking annoying. Like you think about not only the these trillion dollar companies, but you would think, and I'm sure this is true, they have the best marketing, advertising slash brand creative people on the planet. Why does everything have to be called? Is it just kind of a flop sweat there that they not media savvy or pop culture or culture savvy people like we fancy ourselves, but like maybe the older generation, the boomers, they want to make sure they know this means this is the streaming version of our thing. I think that's probably what it is. Think about the word diet. Okay. Like diet Coke. Yeah. There's probably a bunch of other ways you could say that. Mm -hmm. It's just that it's become diet drinks. Just like it's become like plus program. Everybody like knows that, it could be, that thing. It could be something like that. Because I agree with you. We were making fun of it on Sacred because I was like, is it Apple Plus? Apple TV? It's like Apple. <laughs> Apple TV Plus. And it's Amazon. See, Amazon Prime, I think, is a really good name. But we, yes. we stole PlayStation Plus for Sacred Symbols Plus. We just stole. That was because of PlayStation Plus. And I actually kind of have to give it to them because I'm pretty sure they're the first ones to do that. Oh, that's well, interesting. Remember, though, yeah. every, you know, when they go off the reservation, is that racist now to say? Can you say that anymore? <laughs> I don't. Never I, thought I, I it's totally fine. I think but, it's you know, fine. when you when you when you do that, you end up with like Xbox Series X, Xbox Series X, Xbox One X. Right. I mean, so much of the naming when you let them be a little creative, nobody knows what the fuck they're talking about. So I get the plus because it is vernacular. However, I will say I started because I ripped you guys off. I started doing a weekly uh, show that's just for subscribers. Uh, and I'm like, well, I don't want to call it Gavin and Games Plus. That's like everybody. So I, I was like, OK, it's Gavin and Games Gold. Yeah. All right, fine. At least, but, but, but only because I was looking at Sacred Symbols Plus and going, well, I'm already ripping off their business model. That's I'm, okay. No, no, I, no fucking way. I'm going <laughs> to rip off the plus, you know. So you, so, yeah, you yeah, rip I, off like Xbox instead, Xbox Live. Well, it's yeah. kind of like the Pro yeah. moniker too. Like, I, like Apple started to do it with iPhone Pro, and then like PlayStation yeah. decided to call it a PlayStation for, for professional. And it's like that oh, makes cool. no sense because we're not doing PlayStation naming is PS4. a nightmare <laughs> of their premium <laughs> services. I I own the highest tier, and I still don't know what it's called. Um, the, the PlayStation what? Plus, PlayStation oh, yeah. Essentials, yeah, PlayStation. it's like Essential, Extra, and Premium. I think I don't. Need, I can't. Yeah, is that it's what it terrible. Is? Okay. terrible. Yeah, it's, no, I agree. Terrible. Yeah, I agree. Their, their marketing is so good sometimes and then so bad sometimes. And it seems like very, very little of it's in the middle. Um, yeah, I wanted to true. ask you guys as we exit this question, if you have any subscription services you simply refuse to get or don't want to get. Mm. And there are two that come to mind for me and I wanted to talk. I just wanted to bring them up. We don't have to talk about them at all. But one is Disney Plus. I just won't do it. <laughs> I don't like Disney. It's not the content necessarily. I just don't like the company. I don't like that what they've done to Star Wars. They just seem like. It just it has so little heart and soul. When we when we did Frozen, um, I was so impressed by it because I'm like, I've been so shut off from Disney for so long where I'm like, nope, that <laughs> it was it was so fun to watch that movie and see how good it was. But I just won't do Disney Plus. And what's funny is that they're like, fuck you, Colin, because I, we watch probably a Disney movie or a Disney published movie every quarter or something on knockback. So I'm paying probably more by just getting it on Amazon like an asshole. But I won't do Disney Plus. And then the other thing I won't do is Game Pass. Um, mm. Just because people like kind of make fun of me because we tried to get one of our games on Game Pass. And I'm like, yes, I'm very curious to see how it works, mm -hmm. you know, um, like convince me as a developer why this would work. But I think it's so demonstrably bad for the industry, in my opinion, that um, I just don't want to give them a number that they can add to their number that they report. And it makes it bigger and bigger and makes the problem worse and worse. And it concerns me a great deal. Uh, I want a la carte games. And the reason I'm not concerned about people are like, oh, you're happy playing for Spotify. And I'm like, musicians have so many other ways to make to make money. And in fact, their primary money driver has nothing to do with Spotify at all. Mm -hmm. um, and Spotify can even help them get asses in the seats where they make the most money. But you only have your one chance to make money on games. Um, and so I try to I try to practice what I preach in that way. It's the same thing with our merch where we try to do American made merch and fair trade things and all this. It's just like if you make these small changes on an individual level and f small decisions, they could p potentially radiate if we all made small decisions like that. So I try to do try to be consistent in that. But I will admit, because I've said this about Game Pass, it's such a good deal that if PlayStation was like put a gun to my head and they're like, we're going to put our first party games on PlayStation Plus. It's like if that's what you insist, then I guess that's what I'll do. 
but uh, in the meantime, that's the, those are the two I wanted to call out, especially Disney Plus. No, 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 no. <laughs> Uh, Jeff, do you have any subscriptions that you're not? I have never met a subscription service I don't like. I like them all. Um, What I will tell you really quick to that, uh, I forgot to mention I'm uh, Shutter, which is awesome. One of the great things about uh, subscription services is that you can niche down, kind of like you were talking about with your sports boutique uh, magazine or website. Shutter is just all horror. It's original horror. It's classic horror. It's day one drop horror. I adore it. And then also Marvel Unlimited, which is basically Netflix for comics, uh, reading digital comics. Mm -hmm. I adore. But that's cool. Cool. I I will push back with you on Game Pass because I think Game Pass, you know, I have issues, as people know, if they follow me with Microsoft, um, with their management, blah, blah, blah. But in regards to Game Pass, uh, if they can pull their heads out of their buttholes, I think it will change the industry for the better. I think it will improve the medium of video games. And I think in some ways, it's really interesting to see the last three months of PlayStation Plus, whichever tier you're talking about, they clearly are having to sort of amp that up. They've mm-hmm. had some, they, you know, they just put out Meet Your Maker, which was day one, which is a very cool game. Uh, the trial periods are getting a lot better. Like I just played uh, uh, Disney Speedstorm, which is excellent. Uh, for two hours without having to pay anything except the subscription. Um, I think it's better for the medium because it's kind of like what Dagan was talking about, like the the golden age of television. The reason we are in the golden age of, age of television is not because ABC, CBS, and NBC st- kept doing what they were doing. It's because AMC came along and HBO came along with Prestige TV and then Amazon started to compete. And yeah, you've got all these subscriptions and maybe certain business models are not sustainable. But as a consumer, that's not my worry or problem Mm. right now. If you there's no reason to think that the same thing that happened in TV where you got all of this competition because people wanted you to come to their subscription service. And so they were taking chances on ideas that, I mean, even Martin Scorsese's movie is going, the new one, like the Irishman, it's, it's, it's already coming out this Christmas going right to, I think it's Netflix or I don't know who's putting it out, Apple TV, I think. Um, You know, I think we're going to see the same thing in games. And so I actually think when people talk about it being bad for games, I I think it's totally the opposite. I think you would never see a game anymore like Hi-Fi Rush being, I mean, I know it was greenlit before, but if you were to go into a publisher today and say, I want to sell this for 70 bucks, they wouldn't give you a green light. Um, Same thing with a lot of games that you're seeing come to Game Pass and hopefully Sony as well. So I, I disagree on that. And I will say Apple TV Plus, I subscribe to as well. It's phenomenal. Ted Lasso shrinking. Oh, so good. Uh, yeah, there's some great fucking stuff on Apple TV as well. So. Yeah, that's that's one I have to get to because uh, I do like that show for all mankind. And mm-hmm. I'd like to catch up with that. I think that show is really neat. Very, very Colin. Um, I'd love to talk to you further about the Game Pass stuff separately. We should we should mm-hmm. do something about this. I'd love to get your insight as you know an expert yeah. in this in this field, because mm-hmm. um, yeah, I would my fear is that it will require only big spenders to make big, bigger and bigger games and create a collapse of the middle ground. But um, why do you see that? It's actually bringing that back. Like, why do you why on Xbox plus right or Xbox, whatever the fuck it's called Game Pass right now? You're actually seeing a. I wouldn't say Renaissance is a little hy- hyperbolic, but you, you are seeing more double A games come back and get played uh, that were being simply ignored to the point that they stopped greenlighting them before. Right. But wouldn't the evidence not be the games that were included in game pass, but the double a games that are not included in game pass and then see how those would sell on Xbox compared to PlayStation where people don't buy games anymore. That's my, that's my biggest concern. I I think you're absolutely right, but I don't think that's a concern. People like to push that like, Oh, Xbox, the, 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 the attach rate on software to hardware on Xbox is dismally low. It's like, well, of course. Why would it not be? I mean, now, if Xbox or Microsoft is so stupid, they didn't factor that into their business planning. OK, then there, then there's a problem. But of course, you're not going to buy e- e- even the funny part is they're like, yeah, but what about games that aren't on Game Pass? What about, uh, you know, I don't know what a third party game is that just dropped. that's not on Game Pass, whatever. Some Assassin's Creed game. Um, it's like it's still sold 90 percent on PlayStation. I'm like, yeah, because really ask yourself what the com- the customer is communicating there they're basically saying uh the game itself is great it's wonderful but if i have the option to play a bunch of free stuff that's not the new assassin's creed 
or go out and buy $70 for Assassin's Creed so I can play it. What they're really saying is, eh, I'm good enough with the free stuff. It's the same thing they're saying about the movies. It's like, I could go out to the movies more, but, and yeah, I'm not going to get Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 this Friday or whenever it comes out, but I'm good watching, you know, uh, Ghosted with on Apple Plus with uh, Chris Evans and that sexy lady. Um, I think what it really is, the consumer speaking, consumers saying, um, what we got at home is good enough, right? I think that's very disruptive, and I think it makes people uncomfortable, but I think that's what they're saying. And so if people don't buy Xbox games that aren't on Game Pass, that's just saying that what they have on Game Pass is good enough. Hmm. I'm writing this down. I'm writing some things down because I'm going to reach out to you. We should have this conversation in a fuller way. I I definitely want to talk about this. Very, very interesting stuff. Um, I know a lot of people find the topic boring, so I won't go into it any further. Uh, Gene, before we go and dig and I'll I'll get to you, too. I just wanted to see if there was any that you would just not subscribe to under under any circumstance. Yeah, this is a great question because uh, it's cut. Like I won't subscribe to social media services. I'm not going to subscribe to Twitter. I'm not going to subscribe to Facebook if they ever let you charge. You know they do um, now. And it, yeah, yeah. And it's a little bit similar to how people felt about news uh, uh, and have have been feeling about news. You know, uh, news. The news industry fucked up by letting all of our news online for free and then never charging it. You know, the New York Times just put all their news because they they didn't think that the internet would be that big of a deal. They'd be like, whatever, we'll just put our news on there and then that's just like another thing to do it, right? So they completely misjudged the value of the internet and they just put that shit out for free. Uh, Same with social media, you know? Uh, Facebook is just fucking free. I I, I don't want to pay $8 or $11 a month on Twitter so I can tweet longer. I'm trying to tweet less, you know? Um, And... That's just not that valuable to me, so I won't do that. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm, I, I won't subscribe to to OnlyFans. Uh, I, I'm, I'm making sure that I never have a parasocial relationship with with, with any girl that I want to see them naked. That I'll pay twenty bucks for a month for. Um, I can just Google titty and and just be happy with that. Um, Google big boob. Get yeah, <laughs> bo- big big bob, <laughs> big booba. You know, and, and that's it. And and and, and it, five minutes later, I'm fine. You know, or ten minutes, whatever. You, know? <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to get into that. Good man, good man. <laughs> and yeah, and I will subscribe. I, I, you know, I subscribe to the New York Times, and they're the only news to service I subscribe to because they're you know technically still our main competitor. So I still have to watch what they do, and I read the New York Times often enough that it's worth it for me. Um, even though I typically don't like a lot of what they do and they are you know what we call the washington post brand x um but uh yeah that's about it you know yeah interesting i people this will surprise people but i was once a subscriber to the new york times uh, mm-hmm. for several years when i lived in san francisco i feel like it became so biased that i couldn't that i, I just like i can't in good conscience do this anymore um but yeah, and that's what that's how it connected to the athletic. Where mm-hmm. I remember even writing in the field, like, so "Why are you leaving?" And I find those th- those thoughts interesting when people leave Patreon. I appreciate when people leave thoughtful things, even if it's hard to read. So I was just like, "I'm not." This was like supposed to be this, this renegade operation, and you sold out to the New York Times. I'm out. I'm not paying for this, and it sucks because the athletic is great. I li- I don't know if Dagan reads it, but I love I love the athletic. Mm-hmm. Um, Dig. Are there any subscriptions before we exit that that you wouldn't want to uh, pay for under any circumstance? Yeah, a couple, a few. Quick things. Well, I wanted to say first, Disney Plus, Kyle. I like this. I like talking about Disney Plus because I think it's a great value. For me, I don't go in for a lot of the new Star Wars content. I'm not a, I enjoy the Marvel movies, the MCU, but I'm not a huge Marvel mark. But I still think it's a good value because, and this is also, on the other hand, tipping the scales. Maybe a lot of the reason people don't like Disney is because they're swallowing up all the companies, right? But if you go in for Disney, Pixar, Star Wars, Marvel, Henson, Fox, what else do they own? Nat Geo, I think it is, right? Oh God, yeah. It's an incredible variety of things. And you have kids, and too. When I right? have I mean- kids. They're getting a little older, but they still there's something still there for everybody, even having a 12 and 16-year-old. Jaffy. Shit, there's something there for dad. Dad won't stop watching The Mandalorian. He loves it. He's 72. <laughs> but here's the thing that disturbs me as a professional animator that I can't really get past is that Pixar, for instance, right, works on, or even Disney, whatever they used to call Disney's proper uh, animation division, Magic Lab or whatever, whoever, whichever entity puts out a CGI, new CGI film, they work on it for years. It's in development even longer than that. They spend 
hundred, two hundred, three hundred thousand, uh, three hundred million on it goes right to TV. There's no, it just skips a theatrical release now. I think as a professional animator, especially working in feature film, which is kind of the top of the pile, right? I think I have a problem with that. I think there, it seems like less of a, as it's, see, it's nice to have things readily available for people. I know that's a big part of the draw, but it's less of an event now when thing com- things come out. And especially I have a, I, I, I don't only take exception to the notion of that as, as a fan or, you know, part of the viewing public, but as somebody who spent years working on something, I think skipping that part of the process, which harkens back to uncle Walt, you know, part of it was the premiere in the man Chinese theater and having this whole event around something that likened it to live action film, you know? And I think, Having it available to the public immediately on day one in your living room, I think that just dispels a little bit of the magic, maybe waters it down a little bit. And the other thing Jaffe was saying about Apple TV, probably the best value of all of them, but I don't know if you would agree, Jeff, the interface, the UI is God awful. You would think Um, Apple, especially with all of those resources, not just the money, but the talent. The greatest designers in the world. It's insanely bad. It almost <laughs> so seems like clear, you're kidding. Me. I was talking about Apple TV Plus, their subscription service. Yeah. If you're if you're talking about the actual brick Apple TV, yes, that's great too. But yeah, the interface on that is a nightmare. But so is Hulu. I mean, all of these. That's true. Hulu is another notoriously um, bad one. It really yeah. is. The only thing I don't go in for, guys. I'm a mark for anything. Like I, I'm like Jaffe. I echo that sentiment. I'll try, especially in the TV movie world i'll give it a shot and usually i find their good value they want quantity they they want a lot of subscribers they're going in for you know getting millions of subscribers so i think they're doing the right thing so far but one thing that i haven't been compelled to go in for outside of food meal services is the loot boxes and i i'm a fan of so many things Mm -hmm. whether it's games or retro games or skate clothing books comics whatever, you know, shaving, manscaping, whatever, like you would think there was something that would pique my interest so far, but so far I've been able to stay out of that space. I have a feeling if there was a very specific loot box brand name thing, like if Capcom did a monthly loot box, Mm. I might not be able to resist that. I might say, all right, whatever Capcom thing there is, maybe even if you get more specific and dialed in, like if you go Street Fighter on that, right? Like, I would probably go in for something like that, but I'm not, I, I've been able to stay out of that space so far. And there's a lot, there's a lot more than I even realized. I mean, there's a loot box for every area of interest, every hobby. Um, and it's a bit, it's a booming business, right? Cause even if you get, think about it, even if you find out what makes that model profitable for that thing that you're trying to sell, you really probably only need thousands of subscribers to make it profitable. And then upwards of, you know, if you get into the tens, hundreds of thousands, that it's ultra profitable. So it's an interesting, I even think you got, everybody I'm looking at here has such a big social media preference that I even think it would be profitable on a smaller individual scale. Like if if Kyle did an LSM loot box and maybe even say, let's not even start by being too ambitious, let's dial it back to quarterly or maybe bi-monthly. I think you could do that. I honestly think you I'd, could. I'd buy that. Collins bathwater. <laughs> oh yeah, I could bottle my bathwater for you guys. And what, what we try to do, I mean, because we took our, we very, I mean, and I, I say this with a bit of a pat on our back because it was very difficult to do. We am very ambitiously cut out the middleman and brought our merchant in a house, which is almost unheard of, um, and especially for a company our size. And so we kind of already do loot box style stuff in the sense that I'm spending money ahead of time buying things and hoping people, you know, buy them as we release them over time. And I'd rather just people's attention on the few things that we I don't. That's like a cool idea if you want to ring your fucking audience dry. But I think it's what's clear with our audience. And I think they know this about me after all of these years is that I have no interest in ringing them dry. I don't do I, I only ask for your subscription if you enjoy the content. And I always encourage people to listen for free. And in fact, if you talk to, you know, I have a very good relationship with Patreon is one of the biggest Patreons in the world. One of the top 50 Patreons. We have liaisons there. We talk, we ask about things and we request things all the time. And one of the things I request or two of the things I request the most is because I know people really want them are separate RSS feeds. I know 
I mean, I beg for these <laughs> things all the time. And the the second thing I ask for is gift subscriptions. I'm like, give mm. me an ability to give people subscriptions for free um, as like ways to dole them out for thanking people for doing something or doling them out for asking a great question or whatever the case might be. I really want to create a sustainable relationship that is frankly so much more lucrative already than I could have ever imagined. Why would I want to? Why I don't need any more. I want to just sustain what we yeah. have, you know. And uh, I wanted I, to say can that I ask we, two I, questions yeah, about that. Yeah, please. Well, the first one is I, the idea that I don't need any more. I want to sustain what we have is always that thing where I go. Why is that not enough for most companies? Why does, you know, Marvel's one thing, I mean, because they were bankrupt all the time, whatever. But I mean, there's a lot of these companies that sell to the man. Um, and it's like, why, you know, why can't you just be happy with making something people love that's sustainable and living a nice life with that? I mean, what is what is unique about your mindset, do you think, that allows you to think that way and run your business that way where so many others you know, don't. And I don't mean like, oh, pat yourself on the back. I mean, more like that's a real mentality that I think is lacking in a lot of people who have a business. And I'm curious what you think the the factor is that has allowed you to think that way and act that way. Well, I think that for, for me personally, I think it's the nature of because I don't begrudge businesses for chasing constant growth because the nature of their business at the embryonic state typically required that. So what I mean by that is you have five shareholders. They all want their money back. Plus, they want a profit to get that profit. You need to grow and then the grow the growth becomes or it should have some sort of inertial effect on your company where you start moving forward as a bigger unit and so on and so forth. And growth begets growth. It's a very naturalistic economic law as long as you tend to those things. So I think part of it is that I was lucky enough to have enough money to do this without any help. And so I needed. Right. Right. right? So sense. I'm not I'm not in hock to a bank. I have no lease of a space. So those things require growth simply because it's like, well, I have now I have a kid and no, I'm, I'm, I don't have a kid, but it's like you're growing. You're like, I have a kid and I have this mortgage and all these different things. Plus, I owe the bank this for another 20 years for my space. Right. And, this, and so like okay. it requires this growth mentality. Mm. And then I think once you mm. I wanted to say all of that, because then once you take the first step of selling out and I don't begrudge anyone selling out. And what I mean by that is selling shares of your company, either privately or later publicly, but bringing more people in. That's when that becomes growth becomes completely necessary because people don't okay. people don't make investments to make people don't invest a million dollars to take 1.1 million dollars out they invest a million dollars to hopefully get latent income forever and okay but if somebody yeah. came to you and said hey i want to invest 15 million dollars in last stand media would you say yeah no we're we're good I would. It's funny because I would i've always said that i would i would quickly sell out if the, the situation was right my question would be well, it's two things. It's easy for me to say that because there's nothing to sell out to. Without me, the the brand doesn't really exist. So I'm selling out to someone that like where it's like, what are you buying? You're buying me. It's that's like a very old and I'm not saying you're saying it, but people's mentality of that is like it's like a mentality of like stacking people on Fox News at night. I have all these different people. It's like, but it's just, but what if it was just Sean Hannity or if it's just right. Tucker Carlson? I mean, they can just do it without you. They don't need any help. And I, I so I think I've I think. I don't find well, one, myself one could argue yeah. there, though, that Fox has had a history of building those brands like, yes, it's Tucker on Hannity now, but it used to be O'Reilly mm -hmm. and, and it used to be Greta Van, whatever the fuck her name was. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, so, I mean, <laughs> one could say that there's something in the waters at Fox that allows them to build stars. Um, and that's part of what they're buying. But I, I'm not saying that's accurate. I'm just saying no, that I, they're. I, you know, it. I mean, it's the same thing that IGN went through, like when and sometimes people became like some some of us. Be, I don't want to say became too big. I think some of us saw that we didn't really need this place. I, I personally think if Tucker Carlson was like if Tucker Carlson really sat and thought about it, it's like, Tucker, you can probably make like twice, three times what Fox pays you if you just go and do it. Mm. You know, um, yeah. like remove the middleman, just do it on Rumble or something. You probably just, right. and do fucking super chats. You probably make more money than you make right now, which is unbelievable. Um, I think. I just think our company is unique in that we have no overhead, we have no space, we have no debt, we have no other owners. So we're able to kind of just do it for, you know, I try to find ways to make money and keep and, and pay our people more and keep the revenue coming, but we don't do it for growth's sake. I want to make sure that like we're backfilled so that we've earned what we have. If we, if we add 
another thousand subscribers, for instance, I want to make sure that they're happy, but I really want to make sure that the 12,000 or whatever that are already here, they're really happy because they're the ones that have allowed us to grow this. And I just think it's, it's, I guess I've lived in fear for some reason of like poverty or destitution. I don't really know why I grew up in a middle-class house. We didn't grow up in in hard times. Because that's the system. You're supposed to live in fear of that. Right. Exactly. You're exactly right. And I think that I've built some and I think this is what's made me so much more liberal and as I've gotten older, which is rare, but true, especially economically and the way I feel about money and the feel about the rich and all of that is that I'm I do so much better now than I did at kind of funny and certainly at IGN. And it's like it's a huge weight off your shoulders. And it's like I don't really need it's what we were talking about when we I think we talked about the lottery a couple episodes ago where I'm mm-hmm. like, I don't even know what I would do. I still wear fucking T-shirts that I got 15 years ago. I, I, I walk around in sweatpants. I don't even know what I would pass. I buy video games and food. I go out to eat. I smoke weed. I just want comfort. I don't want any and I don't want to worry. I don't want that fear. And so I don't mm-hmm. think this like I think that last stand has become very naturalistic in some way because I really authentically wasn't chasing what it's become. I wasn't. I remember saying when I left to my girlfriend at the time, I want to just make $10,000 a month. If I can even just do that, I'll be fucking happy as a pig in shit for the rest of my life. You know, like I don't. And and it's become so much bigger than that and brought so much more people in than that. I just am. I'm grateful for it. And it's like so when I see people like shaking their audiences upside down, which I see in our space (laughs) a lot, I'm like, I just feel like that's insanity. I do too. Having having. Um, I was on the Iron Lords podcast at 300th podcast uh, mm-hmm. this past yeah. weekend, which was awesome. And and, uh, and we had a lot of different guests or they had a lot of different guests on. And I was saying it's really special when you're in a space like gaming or in any other space where people can just cl- you can trip over free gaming content. You can just find yeah. it anywhere. People sure. are dying to give it to you for free and that people will still give you a super chat, sh- still show up and subscribe to this or come to Patreon. Knowing right. that they don't have to do that is a sign of the quality of the content and the disparate nature of the content and the kind of content people want. Yeah. And I'm very happy just focusing on that niche. I don't know that it even works if it becomes any bigger. Dustin has very cannily noticed that our traffic has been going up pretty substantially. And he thinks it's because PlayStation 5 is just becoming more and more mm, accessible. That makes sense. That makes total sense. And I'm like, that's so interesting. And I, But I also know that our show is probably the most inaccessible gaming podcast that you can possibly imagine. And that it requires what does that mean we go we probably don't even talk about video games for the first 70 or 80 minutes of, a, of an episode <laughs> oh, of Sacred oh, oh, i see what you mean yeah, i mean yeah, yeah. if you imagine if you search for playstation and you came up with sacred symbols and you just started listening to episode 248 from the beginning right. you'd have no fucking clue what was going on no That's idea fair. and so i bring that up because like we're not even trying to, to grow we just want to make the product we want to make and we and i think that's attractive to people it's never going to be this huge thing but I will say, and I've said it over and over again, there are people with a million subscribers on YouTube that would trade in one second their channel for what we have, you know, um, and I'm I'm really grateful as we talk about subscriptions that people put their money where their mouth is. We couldn't do it without them. And that's why it's really important for me to spend money. We were t- and we'll talk about it in our conversation later, Jaffe, but about games is like I go and intentionally try to buy games at full price that I like that I think I'm going to like or that I want to see more of or I support like when Square Enix releases mm-hmm. something, I'm like, boom, no problem. Going to. You know, you release Crisis Core, you release Live Alive or whatever the hell that game's called. You release the Final Fantasy Pixel Remasters, all this. I'm going to buy them. I'm going to buy them as soon as I can because I want to show them that I care. And I think that in a smaller way, when people subscribe to something like Patreon, they're just showing they care. You know, and I appreciate that. So I have a million follow ups, but I don't want to derail. But the next time we talk, I got I got to ask you about some of the stuff you're saying. But I, I, I would love to I I would love to talk to you about it, because I, I think yeah. I, I don't want to. Again, I'm not trying to pat myself on the back, but I think there's a lot of wisdom in, in it. And I think I'm surprised <laughs> And I think it's because a lot of people don't like me in the industry that more people aren't inquisitive about how I built something bigger than all of the things that they're doing. You know, it's just that the other day I was I don't know why, because I don't tend to watch kind of funny anymore. But I think I I, I was on Twitch and I think I was watching the Diablo four developer uh, thing. And then I follow kind of funny and I'm like, oh, they're live. Let me click over there. And it was the very end of one of their shows. And it was so slick and produced like at the end of one of their daily uh, PlayStation daily or whatever they call it. Um, uh, the camera's pulling back like a newscast and you see another guy with a camera push in and the, 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 the desk they're at is super slick. And like, you can see the reflections of the lights. And I was just going, you know, when I was listening to you talk about the, 
overhead or the, the, the money that is owed to people to let them do what they do. I, I just, I look at that and I go, I wonder, do they regret that decision to, tr- because it's almost like what makes this shit so appealing is the rawness and the genuineness of it. And they're almost like seem to be taking a different road. And I was wondering, you know, do you look at that and go, yeah, that's a lot of money that doesn't need to be being spent that they're spending in the wrong place. Not just them, but anybody who kind of ha- puts production where a show like kind of funny does. Yeah. It's it, on the outside looking in now, knowing that I founded that company, it's become something unrecognizable to me, but I think in yeah. some ways that's what people wanted and certainly what the guys there wanted. So I don't begrudge them that sure. I just don't, I just don't see it as necessary. That's the, I don't the, either. Like, yeah. the, the, um, cause it's, you're right. It's like, we need, we have, beautiful microphones and shitty cameras and an internet connection. And I just think there's certain things that have to be of a, of a certain quality, like the audio, the fidelity, the, certainly the content and the humor and all the balance and the chemistry needs to be right. And I don't know if they have that right or not anymore. Um, Cause I, I don't watch the content. I don't watch any game content. I just try not to absorb it anymore, but yeah. I will say that um, I just, you know, I, I remember actually, I think I've said this before is that I was, I remember talking to Kevin who's, who's their, like their executive producer was still a friend mm-hmm. of mine. I love Kevin. Mm-hmm. And I remember picking his brain about things. And I, I was, um, I was thinking it was like, wow, I, I thought they bought that space, you know? And so I was mm-hmm. like, that's actually probably a great investment. <laughs> I mean, right, 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 right. Um, you buy a warehouse space in, I don't know, fucking Soma somewhere, where, wherever you, you are in San Francisco. It. Okay. I don't think, I, well, I, as I understand it, they're, they're, that's like a place that's being leased. And so when I find that out, I'm like, that's um, brutal because, because corporate leases like that are usually really long. You're talking about 10, 20, they could be 99 years. I don't think their lease is 99 years, but that's the kind of shit people deal with in that, in that space. And then it's just a lot of equipment and a lot of overhead in a very expensive place in a definitely a changing environment. But I also think last stand had this, this, this unintentional advantage, Jaffe, in that, we embrace this distance kind of thing before it was even necessary. So we right, were way ahead right. of the curve and I think just way better at it than people. And we still just do it to this day while everyone else has been eager to kind of justify these spaces and this, these investments they've made. Right. right and right. I That's think what's, uh, from the outside looking in kind of funny, does a lot of sponsored content, which we don't do. We don't do any endemic sponsorships. We think it's a huge conflict of interest, but they're interested in that, which is cool. But that kind of stuff is going to become, I think, more required to keep the lights on if you want to continue to have growth and pay their people. They have a big staff. So from the mm. outside looking at, I don't quite understand how it, how it functions because Sacred Symbols does substantially better than their PlayStation podcast. Um, and their PlayStation podcast, no doubt, costs much more to make in just real dollars. So I right. don't know exactly what the intent is there, but I think that it's clear that we're going after maybe different audiences. I don't think they're wrong for doing what they did. And I, in fact, wish them the best. I want them to succeed. I did no, find the company. I, yeah, it, it reflects I, I don't on want to me. dig that up. But. No, no, I know. No, I know. I just, I, I like, I root for them. Cause I, I, first of all, I think like people doing well in the space is good for everybody. I really do believe that. Like when I see pay, other Patreons like Min Max and others, I, I've talked about them in the recent past, mm-hmm. they're growing. I'm like, this is good. You're getting more people on the platform, you know, and more people in our space and they're going to share and they're going to become familiar with other things. I don't think kind of funny is any different. Yeah. I just don't see what the point of all that was, you know, because Got I don't, it. I don't know that it was necessary. I, I, I think we had something truly special when we were running it out of the apartment. And that's what I've tried to in some way recapture by letting people stay where they are and reinvesting the money in the company and in the people instead of investing right. it in a lot of equipment. I mean, I think my, and Dagan can speak to this. Um, and hopefully Gene will be able to speak to this too soon as a collaborator is like, I give bone. I, we have, this will this will shock you, maybe, Jaffe. I don't know. Hmm. Is that and this shocks people out there is that I have no written contracts with anyone that works in the company. Everyone gets paid on time, treated fairly, and everyone gets bonuses. I just give money away for free. Sometimes in the middle of the year, always at the end of the year and in great quantity, because it's like it goes back to the point of like, I don't really need this. OK, I could have $50,000 right. more or I can just give it to everyone. And split it You're up between the worst everybody. conservative I know. <laughs> but that's but that's the You're thing is like so bad at this. <laughs> but that's what I was saying about I've become much more economically liberal. Where right, right, right. I feel like I'm in a position now where it's like you either pull the ladder up or you keep it down. And there's a lot of people yeah. that were like that will pull the ladder up and be like, I'm good. Yeah. And to me, yeah, I yeah. just I that doesn't come naturally to me. I'm not a natural capitalistic leader. I don't want to do that. I'll be the I'll go down with the ship. And I'm keeping the ladder firmly behind me. And I try to just 
So I'd rather instead of having a space, it'd be cool to have a space. I'd love that. That would be interesting. But it's like, I'll just pay everyone instead. And yeah, and we can just keep the money and keep it more simple. But um, yeah, I'd love to talk to you more about the business, because that's what I was saying is that is that it's I think there's a lot of I think we've done a lot of smart things. And I'm I'm bummed sometimes that we because there's such so much animosity towards us that people aren't able to glean all the positive stuff that they could for their own businesses out of it. They're just too hard headed to look at it and be like, this is a not only a win, but a categorical win. And how did they right. do well, it? I'm, I'm always. And we know Gene is aiming for this. You're not going to be with the wire. I mean, two years from now, you'll you'll be freelance. You know, you. I mean, it's ridiculous that anybody at your caliber and your talent works for someone and not yourself. But I know it's easing into the water. Two years, we'll all be working for Gene. That's fine. <laughs> That's fucking fine for me. I'd love to work for Gene. Hey, you're yeah. spoiling the spoiling my plans, man. Um, oh, come on! Everybody knows what's going to happen. I mean, I this whole so conversation about shit. product production is interesting, and I don't want to, I don't want to keep go into it. But like, that's what yeah. I've argued at the Washington Post, uh, especially yeah. where we're doing our Twitch channels, is that we were overproducing, and it's like we have eleven people on a Twitch stream, and it's like why we only need two at the most, three, for right? A lot. That's about it. Um, and I think, if anything, Colin is a classic conservative. He reminds me of a, a, a of a good Republican senator I knew on Guam, who ran his office out of his house, and his only staff member was his wife. Um, and then wow. when you would call his phone, he, he would it would either be him or his wife that answers, and that's it. Right, that's it. Yeah, well, I love I mean, it. And I will say this: I mean, you want to talk about a bad conservative? I'm the one telling my audience all the time, like the only differential that matters between all of you is class. And the more you pay attention to how you're being fucked by the powers that be with your money, Mm -hmm. inflation, taxes, the amount of money you're paid, the amount of profit these corporations make and hoard away. I sound like a fucking communist. That's that sounds leftist. That's that sounds <laughs> yeah, that doesn't sound liberal. That sounds leftist. But I, but I mean yeah. it. Like I think that yeah. class is all that matters. It's mm-hmm. the only thing that matters. Mm-hmm. And they are using all these other things to distract. And speaking of all of that, Jaffe, let's get into your topic because I was really interested in this. <laughs> okay. Um, it'll be a heavy one, I think, or maybe not. I don't know. But you wrote here, fake news will destroy civilization. Yes. Yeah. And so uh, I wanted to talk to you about this. So uh, what, what's on your mind? Well. I have been real um, depressed isn't the right word, but I've been hope I f- feel more hopeless these days when it comes to just where we're at as a society. And, and, and it, and I think a big part of it is for the longest time, we all did consume the same news and a lot of it was a lie. A lot of it was propaganda, but it kept, the peace. And I certainly don't think there's any value in going back to that. I'm not longing for the good old days of, you know, three news shows at night and that's it. Um, But I think as a species, we have done incredibly poorly adapting to the uh, 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 way that we determine what is true and what is not and what is actually happening as in what is not. And I think it is so wrapped up in uh, unregulated rampant capitalism that and it's so wrapped up in the fact that we don't have safety nets in this country for people who get sick or who have mental health issues or just who have a stretch of bad luck that as much as I want to wring the necks of people who are making these decisions that are bad for everyone, fundamentally, I understand that they're scared too. And they're, you know, let me do clickbait or let me make this uh, character. I mean, even Tucker Carlson, if, you know, and I'm not saying fake news, like the left has a monopoly on true news and the rights, all the, fa- I, I mean, across the spectrum when tech Tucker Carlson, you know, off his show will say this is not news, it's entertainment, but you know that he wants to present it as news when he will say a lot of the things that he says on air, he says, oh yeah, I think Trump's a nightmare, but he's not saying that on his show. He clearly, for whatever reason, is going, I need the money more than I need to be able to go. What I'm doing is is harmful. And and it goes across the spectrum. I'm not, I'm just singling him out because we were talking about Tucker Carlson earlier. But I'll give you an example. I I was uh, talking about the Fox News uh, 787 million settlement that they're paying out to uh, what is the company Dominion the, 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 Dominion. Yeah. Um, and I tweeted it out, and I was like, you know, whether you love Trump, hate Trump, or whatever, um, 
I think this is a good thing because it's saying to people who claim to be giving you news, you can't just fucking make shit up that you knowingly are making shit up. And somebody wrote back to me who I think is more of a MAGA guy. And he was like, well, it's, it's, this is just as nothing as, as Russiagate. And I said, okay, I don't understand that Russiagate saw, you know, the Mueller report saw four people who should have been in prison, put in prison. Um, There were a number of things that came out that was of value. And he says, no, 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 let me send you this. And so he sent me some stuff. One was like an op-ed. I'm like, well, that's just an opinion piece. But he sent me an op-ed from the Wall Street Journal. And he sent me a couple of other articles of various sources. And I'm like, when everybody has a link to something that proves their point, Mm -hmm. and we don't have media literacy in school, and we're not taught the value of media literacy, we just really are heading towards a cliff. And for whatever reason, I am seeing it more. I don't know if it's just you get kind of worried the older you get, you see your kids. I don't know. I think part of it is that, you know, I have, a, I don't, I, I don't want to get into the whole trans politics, but I have a trans son. And even in a very uh, liberal progressive area of California, you know, he's still, it's not as easy for him as I wish it would be to not get picked on sometimes and things like that. And I know good and well that so many of these things that these people are saying, it's just a wedge issue. It's just politics. Um, And most, you know, the minute the election season is over, you're not going to hear about much of this, just like you don't hear any more about the uh, the mass, uh, uh, you know, convoy uh, of of immigrants coming in uh, at the border. That was only, you know, when when there was an election. So I just I go, this stuff actually has consequences, I guess is my point. So the older I get, the more I see that this is actually causing everything from physical violence to emotional violence to stress and anxiety amongst people. And we're not doing anything about it because we're kind of fundamentally fucked by the Constitution. We can't do anything about it. It's not really the Constitution's fault, but it's people's fault. Um, And so I'm just kind of annoyed. I don't, I'm just bothered. I don't know what is true. And oh, last thing I'll say, uh, uh, this guy sent me these links. Well, I haven't had time to go through all of them, but I'm trying to be open-minded enough that I am going to go through them and go, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe the Mueller report was all politics. Maybe there was nothing about the Mueller report that was a value of doing. I think that's incorrect, but I'm going to look at the guy's links. But my God, the work I have to do just to find out if this event was meaningful or just propaganda it's i'm busy i'm trying to live a life and now i also be a fucking fact checker of every news story yeah, so i think i think work. i think i think we are fucked as a society unless we somehow solve this maybe ai will do it i don't fucking know that's my thing you've taken the black pill well, well I'll, I'll talk i'll talk to you more about that that's uh, interesting it's a little racist Michael Malice, Colin, those other guys. <laughs> Gene, I don't know what I don't know what the black pill is. So well, I'm I'll, sorry. I'll talk about it when I get to my. Okay, I'll, okay, I'll, okay, I'll let okay. it linger yeah, for yeah. now. I want to I want to hear from the yep. others first. Um, Gene, talk to me. This is an age old uh, issue. I've been worrying about this since. Well, quite frankly, I guess since I understood Metal Gear Solid Two: Sons of Liberty. Um, <laughs> what a crazy game that p- predicted the future, huh? Crazy yes. series. Uh, for people who don't who don't know, uh, basically, uh, I'm going to spoil the ending. But basically, the ending is basically predicting the entire internet. Uh, uh, the, 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 the information, hold on. I, I, I literally wrote an article about it and I, I was, I was, you know, honored to speak to Kojima about this whole, whole thing. Oh, that's awesome. G. Um, but, uh, you know, it, it was the untested truths spun by different interests continue to churn and accumulate in the sandbox of political correctness and value systems. Everyone withdraws into their own small gated community, afraid of a larger forum that ha- that's happening right now with all the algorithms, right? Uh, there's just no serendipity in terms of finding other types of pers- types of perspectives. So people like your like your mega f- replier uh, is only being fed the kind of stuff that would agree with him, you know, because it's agreeable mm-hmm. and people like that and people like to find things that affirm their reality or values. And from the game again, uh, quote: They stay inside their little ponds, leaking whatever truth suits them into growing cesspool of society at large. That's exactly what happened to you, Jeffy, right? That's exactly what that what, what that what that person did to you. The different yep. cardinal truths neither clash nor mesh. No isn't no one is invalidated, but nobody is right. Um, and that's a haunting thing. And I started to see it as soon as Facebook came out, and I was like, 
And I started. I, I was writing op eds in Hawaii about this. I was like, I'm I'm not really happy about this, the the, pre- the proliferation of social media, especially this algorithm based thing, uh, where we're all technically we're not even writing for fucking people anymore. We're writing for machines. If you think about it, right? We're writing for AI. We're writing for an algorithm that isn't even a real thing, you know. Um, and that's depressing. Um, I am very, very pessimistic about about uh, the the ability of the public to trust, uh, particularly the American public, to trust the media. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I have said this in various journalism conferences uh, where I speak to young reporters, and I say I think we've lost two generations already, and I think that I will be dead before uh, the media, the public, ever re- uh, trust the media again. Um, and it's because of so many different things, uh, you know, starting from the Iraq war, uh, which New York Times pushed, right, uh, go, going all the way to today with, you know, the, uh, the, the January 6th, uh, the, uh, everything in Russiagate. Ugh, there's just so much stuff to, to catch up on, you know, the elections, uh, you know, whatever was going on with Hillary's emails, whatever was going on with Hunter Biden. <laughs> Uh, it's just yeah. all, all this crap that that you can't really pay attention to because who the fuck cares? You know, it doesn't really affect your life in in, in general, right? Um, but it you just keep hearing it in the background, and it just starts to to inform your worldview a little bit, you know. And just like like Jaffe said, there's no media literacy, so people aren't really being critical. You you you're not really like checking the sources. You're not really uh, wondering whether the DOJ is actually a legitimate source or not. Um, I don't know. It's it is <laughs> yeah. This it's is a, this, this is as depressing of a of a of a topic as as I expected it would be. But it's definitely something that I've been worried about and stressed about for at least the better part of a decade. Um, and uh, I wouldn't know how to fix it. Uh, I think uh, the pe- social media has been the Pandora's box that we can't close that back up. You know, we can't we can't we can't just stop social media. You know, uh, we can't yeah. stop the internet f- f- from doing what what it's doing. So I don't know what it'll take. Um, I think, you know, as, as I've described it before, that rebuilding trust in the media is going to be a long, we, we can't just do it overnight. We can't just say, oh, trust us, believe you, or check out the story and the, the, believe this story and check out all of our documents that you will never fucking read. Right, know? right. Um, and the, the, the media has been so uh, was, uh, so cartoonified. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I interviewed the guy last week who wrote the book on Vince McMahon. Mm. And I was very surprised to find out that Vince McMahon's dad, who was a wrestling promoter, Trump was a huge fan. Trump till this day is a huge WWE fan. And all of the fake news stuff that Trump was going around, that's like playbook from the McMahon family when the the press was accusing them of rape or all kinds of treating their wrestlers bad. You can read quotes in this guy's book called uh, Ringleader. Of, of literally saying, oh, that's fake news, don't trust the media, all that. And suddenly Trump's doing the same goddamn thing. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the idea of losing generations to that, it's like people literally, when Trump points at people and says, look at them in the back, they're the mm-hmm. bad guys. I'm like, a lot of these motherfuckers live and breathe journalism and they care and their heroes are you know, very respectable people who have broke big fucking stories. And you have just with one brush painted them uh, as just these evil, it just, it makes me so fucking mad. Yeah. And I, I look at the replies to the tweets of the Washington Post, cause we advertise on Twitter a lot for some reason. Um, and then a lot of them are calling us liberals or leftists or whatever like that. And I say, like, you don't realize that the Washington Post is one run. The publisher and president is, is the spokesman for the Reagan family. He's a, he's a, he's the former, his former chief of staff of Ronald Reagan back in the eighties. And he is still the spokesman for the family foundation, you know? And our editorial board is very neoconservative. Jeff Bezos is neoconservative. Jeff Bezos isn't a fucking leftist. He's not liberal. He's fucking Jeff Bezos. Right. You know, right. <laughs> like 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 what would you expect? You know, so uh, but but there's no there's no curiosity in finding out exactly. The, they're, they're not really reading our content to 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 see that. You know, uh, just much in the same way that a lot of people don't listen to Sacred Symbols and they assume that 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 Colin is just going on racist rants every other day. Because, you know, uh, <laughs> it's always one sentence away. You never know. 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. But mostly he's just talking about the stinking Nintendo Switch or whatever, you know, and he's talking about how much he, he fucking loves G.I. Joe for like 99 percent of the time, you know. <laughs> uh, but because it, th- th- there's no curiosity in, in terms of engaging with, 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 with so many different parts of the media because there's so much crap also. So I don't blame them. I don't blame them either. Yeah. And because people are just trying to fucking survive. It's yeah. like people are, you know, it's not like, oh, I mean, we're all very privileged you work in the news, you have a history of it. And, you know, we do this and, you know, but your average person is like, dude, I don't fucking have time to sit down and take a goddamn online media literacy class. That's yeah. not in the job description of being alive. I'm trying to make sure my kids have enough money to fucking, you know, go to camp this summer or whatever. Exactly. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, I quit journalism for about a year and a half. And during that year and a half, I didn't fucking read the news at all. I didn't care. Oh, wow. I didn't care. I didn't care. You took a real. I, I'm not a news. I'm not a news junkie. I, I was. I was a news. That was my job. That's it. Right. Yeah. But once I started working in health insurance, and I was just trying to like like do that, and like you know like handle my handle my my alcoholism and everything like that. I didn't care right. about news. I had I had so much other shit going on that like. But you were still affected, correct, by the landscape of what the news and what the messaging was to society. Though totally, I totally. mean, you know, I I I hate to say it. I hate to bring up anything but i mean about this but i know there was that whole asian hate thing going on when covid uh was and i don't know if you ever had any experience with it i don't know anyone personally that had any experiences with it um you know my ex-wife is asian um Mm -hmm. and but you know in california maybe it wasn't a thing but that that was born out of ignorance that was born out of uh you know, the need to get clicks and the need to get headlines on on certain news organizations. I mean, so even if you weren't reading the news, you could have been affected by the news Mm -hmm. or the inability of the public to digest the news in a responsible way. It's interesting you brought up Asian hate because I have a lot of thoughts about that. Like, I feel like that a lot of it was kind of like pushed by local media. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't think that there's any kind of widespread like like probably going to be canceled but i don't think that i i don't i don't i'm skeptical of this widespread asian hate or whatever like that i, I think it's just right. asian people being robbed every once in a while that's it you know okay so you're saying that story wasn't even a real story it was just a i, good I think i think it was a, a, yeah i think it was a little bit more than it really was you know and it's because a lot of asian reporters uh wanted to make that happen you know and it was a i'm i'm a member of the asian american journalists association association so i'm privy to a lot of these conversations sure and i'm just and i'm just i stay quiet because i don't want to seem like i'm anti-asian i'm fucking obviously asian right uh but i i didn't want to say you know i think you guys are kind of blowing this out of proportion i think it's just although i did hear that you didn't think short round should have won the oscar is that true (laughs) what is the matter with you i didn't even pay attention to that because i you know like like for me like representation is not like the most important thing to me i think it's great but you know it's not like like yeah you think ai could solve it i mean could ai i mean would people care is ai kind of looked at by people as neutral and it's like hey this story's horseshit this story's real or people go no because even that people go no the algorithm for chat gpt is written from with a liberal bin i don't know yeah i mean like you know ai is coded ai is coded by people right so it's it's uh, so it's 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 it's, if it's children then then they're they're going to retain the genetics or Right, or Kojima, the memetics uh, of, of of humans, you know. Exactly. By the way, I mean the, the thing with ChatGPT is that it does have a left wing bias. I mean, there's no question does, about that. Yeah, you know? it's so it's like, to. so it's like people just demonstrate it over and over and over again. Like, there's no doubt about it. So mm-hmm. that and that is a that is a problem. That's a totally separate problem, though. And like you said, it's of of your creators and. It's a lot of left wing people making this stuff, which is totally well. The right wing should make their own fucking chat GPT. It'll be written in basic. It'll be written in fucking Sanskrit. Like John Schneider and Scott Bayo will be the CEOs of the company. Oh, but sure, Scott, come, come Bayo. On. Scott Bayo or, 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 or Dan Bongo, Bongo Bongo or whatever you know. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, no, I'm, that's I'm, a good. I consider myself point, moderately right wing, and I'm. I'm. I, I'll be the first to admit we don't seem to have like all of the creativity on our side so there's there's no doubt that 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 comes from somewhere but um yeah dig what uh what do you think about this topic of news fake news how do you absorb it you know speak about speak about this however you'd like all right uh you know i'm habitually leery to talk about my own personal politics and you know on the show for years now that i've been podcasting and really that's because i think deep down i just love everybody of i find like everybody on my scroll of people that I really love are across the spectrum politically, even though I feel a very specific way. But 
you know what? Sometimes you gotta, like, I'm going to reveal a little ankle here in this conversation. That's fine. <laughs> It's totally you're, hard, cool. you're, you're a hard one to read, dig, and I admit that. And, and, yeah, and, and, and I, you know, because I don't. Talent. First of all, I'm not talent. an expert politically in any way, shape, or form, and I find podcasting. And I love conversation. I love talking. I just love talking to other people, but especially when it comes to talking about culture, pop culture, and all those things. But I just love the nature of a good conversation. That's really what I'm in this for, and, and the joy, the genuine joy of doing that. But sometimes things come up and you got you got to talk about them there's nothing wrong with that i was reading a quote a lie can travel halfway around the world while the truth is still putting on its shoes who's credited to that mark twain i think mm. and that's such a interesting quote as a kind of directly associated with the world we live in now right i love everything that jaffe's saying is that we we we're <laughs> we're so busy dealing with the ways of the world and on top of that we have to sort of um, put aside some time every day just to vet our news. And, you know, the nature of it that we all know now, it's been going on for a couple of decades at least. You know, there's a vast swamp to slog through now just to kind of get the story, brass tacks, what happened, what's going on. The internet makes vetting the news a lot harder. We all know that. You got to put in the legwork. You know, and just the nature of the way the world works now with social media and the internet, that any kind of news, including fake news, just spreads like wildfire. So we all have to adopt our little systems of finding out what's going on and then adding a step, blocking some time to vet it, especially in those things that are important to us, the things that we find ourselves attached to the most. And there's so many cooks in the kitchen. There's a few things that I wanted to say here. There, I have my, like all of us, right? I have my own ways of getting news. I'm probably going to get some booze for this because I find myself not tuned in like I probably should be. So I find myself less informed than I probably should be. I don't really do the work. It's not always on the top of my list to stay tuned in, which is a bad thing. And I acknowledge that. But I do have my systems that I don't even think about. They're so rote. They're just my nature of my daily way of finding out what's going on in the world. First of all, in the car, it's NPR news. That's what, that's how I get my news. I don't, if the kids are not in the car, if the kids are in the car, then they're going to kind of put their phone in to, you know, listen to their music or sync it with, you know, sync it with the car's uh, entertainment system and all that kind of stuff. But if I'm by myself, I listen to NPR news and just get the news. I also will just be really guilty of just getting my news through entertainment. So reading The Onion, seeing what's going on on Rogan, Jon Stewart has been another big thing for me, especially lately. And then I like, for decades now, I've liked my news with an international spin. So I'll get my stuff from BBC World News and stuff like that, just because our national sort of media outlets just tend to annoy me a lot. Now, I'm also a huge Sorry. hypocrite <laughs> because I can't, I can watch or listen to my news with a leftist spin, but I cannot do it. I cannot listen to Fox News. I cannot listen to news coming from the right. I just can't. It just really turns my stomach. So I realize that not only does do my politics play out in that, but also that it's pretty hypocritical because sometimes even... I think reliable, semi-reliable news outlets like NPR could be very left-leaning and very obvious about it and unapologetic about it. But it doesn't bother me because nine times out of 10, I'm agreeing with them. I'm agreeing with their stance. Same thing with Jon Stewart. I just happen to agree with him most of the time. So I don't mind getting that slant, which is really not the right way to digest your news. But I digress. A lot of us do that. Here's mm -hmm the two things that bother me about the fake news. The nature of fake news should bother all of us. What do we do about it? Solutions? I'm probably not the guy for that. But here's the two things that bother me. It's not just the nature of this thing existing and sort of the snowballing nature of it just getting worse, which I think is inevitable. But two things. The people that I think are unapologetically entertained by it it's another form of just entertainment, I think, for a lot of people on both sides of politics. And the other thing is the people that just want to take 
the fake news at face value, even though in their heart of hearts, they know it's not real. In other words, it's a very Burger King, have it your way style of consuming you know, the news, current events, whatever's going on in our country, the world, where you're getting it your way and you're liking it, even though you know that you're, li- you're being lied to and you're lying to yourself. You accept it that way. You want it that way. There's comfort in that. You, want, you not only want the news, but you want to hear that it's gelling with your own personal politics. That's a huge mistake. And I think a lot of this is what fuels the fire between the right and the left. That's the thing, is that this is just perpetuating this argument or whatever sort of barriers are between the right and the left in the country. And I think, I do think that there's, and again, with limited knowledge and not tuning in like I should, I do think there's a large return. It seems like there is a large return to the center in this country, or that's in the offing with just people like I'll use an example like Lex Friedman, right? The people that are just rational, reasonable, not objected to or never objecting to present both sides of an argument, just um, an intellectual perspective on news that I think welcomes everybody. Not news, but also people and politics and what happens and the goings on and all that sort of thing. But the thing that that I get worried about beyond just the nature of the media organizations and these multi-trillion dollar companies that create the news is that I think people are getting accustomed to it. I think this is just the way of the world. There's kids that grew up in this that mm. this is this is all they know. So and and not only being entertained by it, but knowing that it's really not the way it should be, but accepting it and also enjoying it. And maybe even the part of us that just wants to not even acknowledge that there's another stance on an issue or something like that. I think I see it definitely fueling the fire for the outrage against the other side, whatever side you may find yourself on. And that's just kind of unacceptable. I, I am on the left. I'm on the left on most issues. I've almost always been of that mindset in my in my life. I'm probably most akin to like what they call an old school 80s liberal. Like that's just really always how I felt. It never really has changed. And I've been around all sorts with friends and family with politics. Our our family really runs the spectrum politically. But that's just where I am. But I think it's unacceptable to tune the other side out. You know what I mean? But can can I ask a question? Yeah, because this sure. is, to me though, I always, like I, I agree with that, but I don't think, I could be wrong. I don't think that's going deep enough, though, mm. because I think the very nature of us as a society being so susceptible to what you're talking about, on one hand, if you, yeah, sure, everyone's ultimately responsible for their own actions, of course. But if you just drop the whole kit and caboodle at the feet of the consumer of news, whatever news they choose to consume, right. I think you miss potentially the point of why it's so appealing and why it's kind of like, it's kind of like, yeah, of course it's your fault. If you go into Panda Express every day and eat chow mein that you are in bad shape, but it's also Panda's express fault because they intentionally hire scientists to put things in the food, to make it addictive right. and to make it desirable. Right. And so why are we so susceptible to having the news this way and a lot of it comes down to the fact that there's money to be made and we're all i mean i I hate to sound like a broken record but it all goes back to capitalism and all goes back to unregulated capitalism and no social safety nets if fox news or tucker carlson or any of these people didn't seem to think they needed more and more and more and just to hoard everything they might not be making such decisions that they know are harmful and hurtful, and we might actually have a shot in hell. But given that everybody is so busy either not having the time to pay attention because they're trying to pay for their own shit, yeah. or whatever happens when you get a lot of money and you get so easily corruptible that you're willing to to do anything for more, even though you don't need more, um, I think that's, if we don't address that, then we're just wagging the finger at the consumer and going, you should be better. And it's like, they should, but why are they here in the first place? Yeah. It's not 
really their fault. I think you're right, Jeff. I mean, I think there's a tremendous amount of comfort. Again, going back to how just how hard it is today. Like I grew, I was born in 1973. I saw the decades of the 70s and 80s and into the 90s. Things were much different for families. It, things were more affordable. Things were more. There was just. It, it was just, e- it just seemed a lot easier and a lot less complicated. So I think there's a great comfort in getting, he, I think it, brass tacks, hearing what you want to hear. So, and mm-hmm. I'm not picking on Fox News because the, the left outlets, news outlets do this too, but Fox totally. News will present a story. This is what's going on in Seattle. They could stop right there. But they say, this is what's going on in Seattle. Look at these fucking yahoos. And then everybody says they're disturbed by the news. But they're comforted by that spin of, oh yeah, those guys are yahoos. They're fucked. The left mm-hmm. is fucked. They're look at them. They're they're out of their minds. They're wrong. Whatever. So there's great comfort in the the news is unsettling, but the fact that somebody is agreeing with you is so comforting that it it soothes you. It, it's 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 placating right. you, and you come back for it. Yeah, you come back. Uh, this for whole that. conversation reminds me. Uh, sorry. Uh, This whole conversation reminds me of a book I read, and it was very formative in how I view politics in the world. It's called The Big Sort, and it was released in 2004 uh, by a journalist, Bill Bishop. And he was doing a series of stories about how he noticed that migration was affecting politics. And Americans were clustering to places (laughs) that politically agree with them. So there is kind of like this cycle of – so earlier earlier I was talking about how algorithms kind of fed into that. But it felt like that it was already happening as people ha- ha- er, were, were able to become more mobile and they were able to move into towns and cities that made them more – palatable you know they were able to be an openly republican or openly de- democrat so that's why you know you see all of these clusterings into cities and then like people retreating into into you know virginia suburbs or whatever you know sure. um, yeah yeah exactly you know uh, and it's it's been kind of happening already so it's like kind of like the, a chicken and the egg issue it's like it, the, the consumer kind of wants it too like like Dagan was saying but also jaffe you know like obviously you know facebook and and uh, fox news are all kind of taking advantage of, of 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 that movement and just kind of throwing more wood into the fire and making it worse and so that's why now america is in kind of like this political standoff between different regions you know let me ask you guys this is there any and gene you 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 guys all may be able to speak to this is there any news outlet reliable news outlet that really is not politically affiliated one way or the other anymore whether it's a newspaper or a tv station traditional new old whatever is there any true source of just unbiased news i doubt it that's you used to say the wires, but even I, I, should, that, I should say yeah. the Washington Post, right? But no, <laughs> I, I, I would always maybe say the Washington Post. Maybe, maybe, yeah. maybe it might be the yeah, closest. Yeah, the wires, okay, sure, people they, would they, say, but yeah, I don't. But I don't think that's even true either. I, especially with the, I follow the APN Reuters, and I think they're both biased. I mean, um, I if I might cut in here, please. I think um, there's so many interesting threads to pull. Pull. I didn't want to interrupt anyone before, but I was looking. I just wanted to put a period on this thing with black pilling. I looked up the definition for you and I found it. And by the way, I was looking up definitions. I have a guess I haven't heard this term in a while. It seems to have been co-opted or kind of gleamed onto the incel movement. Is that a movement or are you branded an incel? Do you declare yourself an incel or are you, a, are you branded an incel? But it seems like people I, it put this on, on them now. I think you're probably branded because it's involuntary. Right. Yeah, oh, you, no, yeah you, of course. Of you course, just yeah, are an incel. Because right. right. we, we were talking, like Jaffe was talking about how some people just don't get laid. And it reminds me of right. the old Louis C.K. joke about how just nobody fucking just kisses them. Like they just wash their dick and that's it <laughs> for the rest of their lives, you know? <laughs> that you're the only person that touches oh, your dick for your entire life. You know? <laughs> I love it. I love him. Um, but I found a definition from 2017, which is probably around the time that I um, first heard the term. It's on, it's, uh, on Urban Dictionary with 800 thumbs up. It says the black <laughs> pill is basically the ultimate and hardest to swallow red pill. It is about realizing nothing matters and there is nothing you can do that will change anything. Mm. Basically, extreme nihilism. Um, so or apathy. Oh, I love apathy. Yeah, apathy. Exactly. So that's that's how <laughs> I under, I understood it as well. Almost like an anarchy or a, uh, not anarchy, really, but a nihilistic point of view. Um, but yeah, here's the thing that I, I feel like I, I want to bring up maybe as the most right-wing person on the show, certainly the most right-wing person on the show, but not someone very right-wing. I still have very fundamentally right-wing views, but in some ways, but I, I think I've definitely softened in a lot of ways. Um, t- 
to move forward, there has to be a broad based acknowledgement that the media does wholesale lie about right wing issues and figures to a degree orders of magnitude greater than happens in the other direction. And the media has to take some general ownership over Trump. It's so funny for me sure. to watch. Dude, I watch the news. Now, I don't watch it so much anymore as much as I listen to it now, like podcasts or whatever. But I used to be a pretty huge MSNBC consumer, which a lot of people are surprised about. But I'm the one I like. I always was like, I already know what I feel. I just want to hear like what other people hear. So one show I used to watch a lot was Morning Joe. Uh And Morning Joe, who used to be on Morning Joe like once a week? 2015, 2016. Donald Trump. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. You know, they did have more Donald Trump used right. to be on that show all of the time. Mm-hmm. And that show helped legitimize him politically, gave him a lot of juice. They were using Joe Scarborough and Mika as back channelers. They were going to dinner and all these things. And now mm-hmm. years later, they've been like, oh, distance. Yeah. Donald Trump. Mm-hmm. But they never were sat down and been like, but what about the role you played in this mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. by legitimizing him? I don't think you shouldn't should have or shouldn't have legitimized him. I don't I don't. But I, don't, I do think you play a role in this because and you're acting like nothing happened. And I, that's I, I think I really wanted from a right wing perspective that I think needs to be injected into this conversation. We were talking about things that weren't true. I mean, think about the things that weren't true, right, that that have been that have been told to us by. What I would consider and what I don't know if you guys are, are familiar with Curtis Yarvin, but he's like a philosopher. He's actually a guy that thinks that the United States should be a monarchy. He's a really interesting dude. But he has this, his, this notion called uh, a cathed- the cathedral, if you've ever heard this term, which is something that Michael Malice uses and that I brought up earlier and a few others, which is this idea that there is actually I brought up a definition here. Yarvin believes that real political power in the United States is held by something he calls the cathedral, an amalgam of universities and the mainstream press. According to him, a so-called Brahmin social class dominates American society, preaching progressive values to the masses. I think that this is obvious. Like, it's actually so beyond true that it's obvious. The funny thing about seeing a lot of protests is it's like the corporations, the media, everyone hates the right wing. And you're on the left wing. You know, and I'm not saying you, I'm saying that the royal you is acting like you're in the resistance, the resistance to what the right wing has no power, right? Well, like the right wing uh, has I, I, I no would dis- power. I would, I, would dis- I would disagree with that. I, I would disagree that the right wing has no power. I think if you ask um, uh, uh, certain races in America um, how safe they feel in certain parts of the country uh, or certain sexual orientations, I think you would quickly find they would disagree with you that the right wing has no power. Uh, I think if you look at people who are struggling to get by because um, uh, this sort of patriotic obsession with capitalism in America and with pull yourself up by your bootstraps and all this shit, um, you would find there's a lot of people suffering under that who aren't able to do that. And it's like, well, that's tough shit. You're not exceptional enough. You should suffer. Right. So I, but, but I, I am curious about, um, I agree with you about the legitimization of Trump and and there should be some acknowledgement of that. But the first thing you said um, of there needs to be an acknowledgement of all of the way that the right wing news has basically been lied about or the left wing media has out and out lied. I am always looking for that. The problem I have, and maybe there's a solution that you have found, is that whenever I reach out to the world for that, I'm sent these crazy fucking fringe links. It's like, oh, yeah, the vaccine was terrible. I don't understand the vaccine was terrible. Most people who took it didn't have any issues and it did a lot of good. Oh, but look at this. Okay, and they send me a link and it's like some fucking one man band quack in Montana. Who's like, I found this doctor who said, I'm like, I need, you know, where's this evidence. And I'm not saying you're wrong, but clearly you're a smart, educated guy. You're not taking the facts from people like that. So where do you get your assessment that the right wing has been, uh, you know, uh, or the left wing has been lying out and out about right wing figures and right wing issues. It may very well be true, but where do you get that from? Well, I think if you just ex- it's not even experience. Let's I, I wrote some of these things down. Right. So like the Steele dossier, right, the 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 
Russian, the supposed Russian piece of, you know, written by this British intelligence agent about all these can't, it's sorted things that happened with Trump and Moscow right. and all that. Trump that heat Buzzfeed, on the bed and all that, that, that BuzzFeed News published that, right. that, and nobody else did, right? Right, exactly. Oh, wow. And now they're out of business, but that was yeah. considered a brave a brave move. That was complete bullshit, right? Like, okay. And that yeah. is the, the source of FISA warrants. That is the source of so many things that have been written about in dozens of outlets that had direct access to different different people and intelligence agencies. That's a major thing. I think COVID actually is a major thing. The 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 government and the and this cabal of 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 fucking pharmaceutical companies and all this, they didn't know what the fuck they were talking about. They had no clue what they were saying. And what, a lot of what they said was wrong. Mm-hmm. Well, like I don't yeah, know all these but, different times. But, but do you think it the, was wrong like they were intentionally misleading, or do you think they were going, wow? People are dying all over the fucking world. There are mobile crematori- crematoriums in China rolling through the streets because they don't know what to do with the fucking bodies. And it's like, well, shit, we got a fucking punt. Uh, let's do what we can. I mean, a lot of times when it's painted as, and again, you may be right if you're saying that it was malicious, it was evil, it was totally meant to be fuck you. We want to make what we can make and get out. Then I am with you. But I never looked at it like that. I looked at it like it's like, well, of course, they're going to be wrong and right and wrong and right. And new evidence comes in and suddenly they're wrong and they pivot. I mean, isn't that what else would you do? Just ignore it? No, I don't think you ignore it. I think that there has to. It's what I said earlier is there has to be some sort of accounting of what happened. Right. Instead of pretending that Mm -hmm. it never happened and pretending that the Biden administration didn't write a memo saying there would be a winter of death and destruction or some weird shit for people that for the unvaccinated and all of that. Uh, you know, the the famous clip of Rachel Maddow going on and on about how the 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 uh, shot was going to stop you from spreading and all that's all it's all false. Rachel Maddow is the worst. And all I'm asking for is for like someone to like be like that happened. Like someone in a position of power, like what I would really respect out of Joe Biden, who I personally think is a vegetable. Like, it's actually unbelievable to me that he's running. He's going to announce apparently from when we're recording this next week. Yeah, so the week this goes yeah. up yeah, yeah, yeah. on oh, Patreon. Wow. That he's, it's like unbelievable that that old doddering vegetable of a man is the best that people, people can put up. And by the way, I'm no Republican and I don't want Donald Trump to win. I'm totally behind DeSantis, by the way. I mean, I'll be totally open and honest about that. Like 100 percent want DeSantis to be the guy. But we'll see how it all shakes out. Otherwise, I'm going third party or I'll look at Robert F. Kennedy Jr. Whoever. I don't know who the hell I'll look at who's running as a Democrat. So I'm not I'm not bound by party, but I am deeply concerned. And it's these are just certain points. And I think it's happening again with the Ukraine war where um, where it's like you're lying. You're lying and misleading people again. And what's so fa- fascinating to me is that this new tranche of documents that was leaked by some rando on Discord. The, mm-hmm. the 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 media seems much more intent on putting this guy away than just going through all the things he said, which revealed that the government is lying about so many things, including the engagement of American soldiers against Russian soldiers in Ukraine, mm-hmm. which, which is already happening. Yeah. So dangerous. Imagine if one of them got captured and hauled back to Russia. Yeah. Okay, you know, like, 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 this, that, what do you what do you want them to do? Acknowledge you want you want Biden to say, yes, we have special forces over there helping Ukraine because we think politically it would be really bad for America if Russia uh, decimates and takes over that part of the world. I would I, mean, I would you, personally my personal request would be that if you're going to do this, you need congressional authorization. Then you can right, act in secret minute, ways if you want. You can okay, you need to get congressional okay. authorization to do these. That's things. fair. You no, know? no, that's fair. I agree with that. And, I agree and with like that. that can, that's the kind of thing that can literally set off a global war. That's a war. That's like that's yeah. like a serious thing. Yeah. And instead of people looking at those documents, which are clear about what they say and are also clear about a, a bunch of other things, including that Ukraine isn't winning, which is which is also like it's a total quagmire. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and okay, but I, I have to. Add, OK, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I was just going to say what you're asking, like, what should we do all these things? My whole thing is, is like. The government hasn't even sufficiently explained to anyone why we're there at all. They're just being like, we're doing we've uh, every time I turn on the TV, it's oh, we've approved another six billion dollars in aid, which, of course, is not six billion dollars in aid. It's six billion dollars for Halliburton and Raytheon for weapons. Or we've approved five hundred million dollars for aid. But I've never I've never heard anyone say this is why this is relevant. I hear people saying things like we fight them over there so we don't have to fight them over here. And I'm thinking like we're going to fight the Russians, the Russians over there. I see people like no. Lindsey Graham on Sunday shows going on and on about how we're we're winning the war. It's like we're we're winning the war. <laughs> we, I, I don't 
this is what I'm talking about. Things are so okay, kinetic my, in some way that you can't hyperbole. even stop and acknowledge any, anything, uh, any, any reality. Oh, okay, so my question, though, is, so I'm hearing you say all this, and I know you're a level-headed bloke. Um, so I go, I'm not hearing this from some friend. Like I had a woman at my house the other night who was like literally telling me that, you know, the, the, the Disney corporation is filled with pedophiles. No, like, I don't believe that. I don't believe well, I'm that. Like, well, I'm sure there are some pedophiles there. There was a pedophile at PlayStation. They arrested him a couple of years ago. If yeah, you remember. remember that. That's how I found um, one of those awesome Predator Hunter guys. Oh, that that's, how I right. found, that's how I found mine, yeah. too. Gene, Gene, Gene and I had an awesome conversation about. Oh, I haven't found my Predator Hunter and yet. The F- I'm so and the excited. FBI is probably reading our conversation being like. <laughs> right. It's it's a whole but, reason why but, I, I'm, all, I'm on Rumble, because all of the pedophile catcher uh, 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 channels. That's good stuff. Off of YouTube and get killed on one day. That's how I'm getting exposed to Rumble on the right wing discourse right there. But yes, I don't think you're one of those like, oh, there's pedophiles in, in Disneyland. So as a level headed fella, when you're saying things like um, Rachel Maddow uh, lying about the shot, for example, to me, there's a big difference between a journalist going on the air and going based on my uh, interview with the head of the CDC or Fauci or whoever's in a position, I'm delivering the news to you that they say this is going to be the way it works versus going, I'm going to intentionally mislead people and I'm not going to retract it when I have new information. Right. Which which thing are you saying occurred? I'm saying the latter someone- occurred that they, they're saying, yeah. I don't think, I don't, I think some of the lying is malicious. I think, I think most of the lying comes from ignorance is what, which yeah. is what you're saying. I don't know if that's with malice or not, but it's what, what you're saying is the latter, which is I think that there needs to be like I've never seen Rachel Maddow go on the news and be like, by the way, that famous shot of me going around that that goes around and will go around in perpetuity because I will not acknowledge that it exists. Mm -hmm. I was completely wrong about that. I'd have so much respect about that. And I think that's what I was kind of thinking about when yes, Fox keeps coming up and I'm not really a big Fox fan either. I do like Tucker Carlson quite a bit, actually, and I don't make any apologies for that. And I Mm -hmm. like that show, The Five, which is on like during the day. And I watch it sometimes like on YouTube. But I don't watch Fox News otherwise. I don't like Sh- Sean Hannity's from Long Island. You know, we have a fucking boner for everyone from Long Island. I don't even watch <laughs> him. You know, so so, is so O'Reilly. So, yeah, and O'Reilly. Well, he's he's out. So I'm, I have no allegiance to them. But when I hear this conversation about Fox News and Tucker Carlson, and all these things, I'm like, but what about MSNBC? Like, to me, they are mirror images. The very the very the very um the very reality we live in is that no one acknowledges that they're the same thing. Like people always bring up Tucker, which I think you brought up earlier. Uh. Jaffe, mm-hmm. Tucker Carlson is delivering entertainment, not the news. They were actually sued over that. And I think had to kind of come out and say like, this is they, their defense was like, he's not news. He's entertainment. Yeah. But what no but one he brings presents up, as news, though. Right. But let me finish. What no one brings up is that the same exact argument was made by NBC Universal in lawsuits protecting Rachel Maddow. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. no one brings that up because the t- attacks only go in one direction always in but, one direction okay, and the mistakes go in one that, direction I don't, I don't the audits go in one direction the like like it's so uh it's the, it's it's weaponizing the audits i would agree with you yeah. and, and there are aspects that only go in one direction but in the case of msnbc which i think is absolutely biased um oh, and sure. kind of like dagan, dagan was saying it's like it's biased but i don't mind it because nine out of ten times i agree with the bias but i have to acknowledge that i you know i know that but the fact of the matter is is that if they really are engaging in uh harmful lies do what dominion did fox clearly just got their you know they can you imagine if that would have gone to trial they got their clock I cleaned mean, i mean i can't even imagine how much they would have had to pay to, i mean right so more. if if msnbc is maliciously doing it and there's evidence of it they should be called out on the mat and they should be you know sued to high heaven but i think it. but i think it's what you're talking about because i about capitalism and the kind of the inherent brokenness of capitalism because i i agree with you i think unfettered capitalism is fucking crazy i've, I've gone on yeah. and on about that for, I know, yeah i know yeah. for years on sacred symbols and i think it needs to be reined in too but i do think it's dangerous to say like well litigate it it's like okay go up against nbc universal i mean that's not a trivial thing you know mm-hmm. um like dominion no, beating fox news dominion is an impressive did it like Dominion winning 10 times or 12 times. It's like yearly gross revenue is yeah. like a David and Goliath thing. Fox news could have wrapped that up probably for years. They were so intimidated and scared by it that they got rid of the case as soon as possible without having to admit anything, which I thought was kind of strange. If I were at Dominion, I would have been like, keep $50 million and admit 
on the air that you guys yeah, lied. Yeah, yeah. right. Um, I, that goes back to calling to your point about accountability. There's no right. accountability in journalism. Like we never, we never want to. I work with people who are like this, and they never want to admit that they were wrong. Isn't they that don't, strange? They don't want to fucking say it. I thought know? there was a whole retraction th- morality about journalism when it's like, oh, here's the twenty things we got wrong I've, in yesterday's paper. In you guys know on, sacred, on yes. sacred symbols, I. Mm-hmm. I mean, we, we don't right, always start because right. there's not always we start the show with the things we got wrong in the last episode. Right. Like, I am so embarrassed by the things that I get wrong that I don't I always tell people it's what I say over and over again. I get things wrong. I just want if, if it's like a math problem and I show you the work, you understand how I got the answer. And then you go, oh, you got this wrong. But I understand what you were doing here. Yeah. And I think that an important part of that is just saying, like, I was wrong last week. You wrote in about this. I was totally wrong. If I don't acknowledge it and keep going forward, then people take me less and less seriously. And I guess that's what I'm saying. But you know what, Jaffe, you're going to appreciate this is that because we're both West Wing nerds is, <laughs> you know, the West Wing has this really, especially later on, has this really like we're going to do the Supreme Court thing where we get people from both mm-hmm. parties. We're going to have the fucking secretary of state be the guy I beat in the general right. election. Like, but that's the kind of conciliatory thing that I actually think we need. And sure. I would argue, and I, I would think that there are two things that I would argue from a political point of view began us down this road and they're two random things, but I think they're really important and it has a radiative effect from there. The first was when um, they got rid of the senatorial, um, the, uh, the judicial, filibuster for nominees i'm trying to think of the date i think it was 2012 and it was um harry reed right and people at the time said and mitch mcconnell who i think is a fucking turd but he gave a pretty prophetic speech where he was saying this is going to come back and bite you in the ass yeah and what happened right they shoved through three supreme court justices with that rule change three right that would have never happened if they didn't make that rule change, right? A huge, huge problem. I think that was um, the, a, a one huge major radiative effect right, right. Uh, from that particular answer or for that particular choice. And um, the second thing I think that that happened was just the, the general election of Donald Trump, I think just broke down norms and people were went out of their way so quickly to try to defame him that they wouldn't let him just hang himself with the rope that he already had. They had to just like go and make things up and make things worse and go for all of these lives and and mistreat him in some ways instead of just letting him letting him just rot and giving him all this attention. And so I think that I I, I think he was born out of Citizens United, though. I mean, that he wouldn't exist if that as he is today, if that had not been uh, uh, allowed by the Supreme Court whenever that was right. And that was like because a, people voted for Trump as a as a protest to the politicians that were basically beholden to corporations, and not the people. Right. I mean, that was what a lot of people saw in Trump was someone who was free of those shackles, right. Right. which wouldn't be there in the fucking first place if the fucking money was out of politics. But anyway, yeah, I, I hear you. Yeah, well, I, and a, I've evolved on Citizens United, too, because I remember when that happened. I'm like, I, I don't really have a problem with this because it does seem like a very literal interpretation of the Constitution. Like, why wouldn't a corporation have some sort of personhood? And people made fun of that. But like, why wouldn't it have entityhood in the political process? Right. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. it's been it's clearly out of control, like the money situation's out of control. And I, I want to say I just want to say this and we can we can go around and, and anyone else wants to say this is that uh, say anything they want. I don't want to hang on this too long if you don't want to. But journalism has become performative. The beauty, the beautiful thing about being a a pundit is that I can kind of just say things and kind of interpret things, but you don't really rely on me to tell you what's true and what's false. I tell you the truth because it's in all of our best interest to do that, but you really shouldn't rely on me. I always tell people, go to the source, go see things for yourself, go make your own. That's why I want to bring so many different personalities on the shows so that we can be as journalistic as possible, but that's not really my charge. I think the performative journalism on, on the rungs where people do rely on those like, uh, mm. and, and I hate to bring, I'm not trying to beat up on the Washington Post, but Glenn Kessler, I think, is a really good example of this recently. He was the fact checker over there. Who, who's wrong? Straight up wrong about the things he's fact checking sometimes. He and is, I think that that's is, fucking he crazy. sometimes wrong that's about dangerous. things. You know, and, and, right. and have you seen him apologize for it? I ha- I did. And that's why I was going to, there is some accountability, right? Like, and I like that. And that's I think huge. that we need to see more of that. But, you know, to me, the big problem is a broken capitalism that has worn down people. And I also think it's like this never ending militarism that Mm. drives people say like i'm like why are we spending any money in ukraine i'm not even entirely sure why we're still in nato that's an entirely different conversation to happen right 
But it's like, what does that have to do with us? And people say, well, Colin, we can do both. We can take care of our own and we can do that. And I'm like, really? Where's the evidence of that? Because all that seems to be happening is we just send money and met weapons over there and nothing changes here. The border, we were talking about the caravans. That was obviously ridiculous, but it's true that more people than ever illegally are coming into the United States right now, right? Like it is true that we have a fentanyl crisis. Oh it is true God, that if the Marines, true. if we Huge. should be engaging anywhere militarily in the world, it should be with the fucking cartels in Mexico with the, with the permission of the Mexican government. Right. We should go wipe them out. Right. I mean, that well, would be we like, should also not make drugs illegal. That would help a lot, too. Yeah, I'm also right. I mean, you know me. I mean, I, I know I, 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 I know, total I know. libertarian philosophy on that. I totally agree. But and I think me, that will can help. I, 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 I got to ask you this. The last thing that I'll say on it is when you say this is not true and this is, you know, where do you recommend a, a progressive like me go to get? I don't want quackery. I don't want some bullshit crap that I get from 99% of people who send me links on Twitter. If you are a progressive left person who still has an open mind and wants to be able to look at people with different opinions respectfully, where do you get that data? Where would you recommend someone like me go where I can go, okay, I may or may not agree with this, but the there's no agenda other than, hey, this is the information we have. And you can do with that what you want. Does that exist? How do you know these things? I read well, the National Review a lot. That's so fucking National funny Review? that you brought that up. That was exactly what I was going to say. That is so hey. weird. So that's, that's so spot. strange because what I was going to say about them, and I don't know if you agree, Gene, is that the National Review is a Republican, like an old Republican, mm-hmm. Buckley right. pub- like publication, old but Republican, it's yeah. like a laundering piece for rational Republicanism or more moderate Republicanism. So the things that it's not a MAGA institution, but it does wash some of that stuff away so that it, you could still see like the populism without the MAGA or like the, the righteousness of all that stuff. So in other words, like when they write about something positive, you kind of know that it's in my opinion, or especially on their podcast, I like their podcast, the editors, um, it's which is a really good I think they do it twice a week. It's stuff like that where I I because I, I do read Zero Hedge. I do read all this shit that would be like very right wing, right? And, but right. I know that it's got to kind of trickle down and you do have to kind of click around. And it's as you said earlier, it's a it's like a job in and of itself. So I also don't right. know what's true or false. All I know is that when you well, I know in, in some and in some things that are true and false. And that's those are the things that I brought up, whether it's like kind of the the militarism you're seeing with Russia whether it's kind of the bubbling stuff with Taiwan. But no one's explaining anything. It's just like kind of these assumptions about, oh, yeah, of course, we're going to send all this money there. And of course, we're going to inflate the fuck out of the uh, out of our monetary system. And all these bad things are happening in the background, but no one reports on it. You know, people are divesting from the dollar and starting to use other petrodollar or petrocurrency and working in the yuan and and the ruble and and everyone acts like everything's okay. And so I, I do share your your kind of pessimistic outlook because I don't know what breaks it up either. And I think part of what I think is coming to the fore is that the United States as it's constructed is maybe a little unnatural. And that tension had kind of come up in the 1860s and the 1850s. Obviously, there was a fight between two, two sides. It's not so clean cut anymore, but there's definitely two polar opposite sides of the country. And it's not so neatly geographically defined. But as Gene said earlier, like I moved to Virginia primarily because my family all relocated here. Right. But uh, but a secondary consideration was the political reality of Virginia, which is a southern state, but not so not southern. Deep south, right? You know, like it's you not like get, you want to get out of San Francisco, right? <laughs> right. And I lived yeah, in San Francisco sure. where your vote didn't my vote never mattered. I mean, no. I, it was comical. Right. You, you know, were canceled and out. so that mattered to me. But and, and so it, it is. And I do note that people in my neighborhood seem to kind of be self-sorting in some way. And the state is, I think, turning more red in some way. It's really only blue in any sense oh, or purple in any so? sense because of because of Alexandria. Okay. I mean, otherwise it would be totally oh, red. Right, right, right. You know? um, yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no, no. I just I mean, if I may, as my parting shot on this topic, certainly, Kyle, I think I do have a solution. And I don't mean to be like paint myself as John Lennon dreamer here or anything like this, but it does have a lot to do with what you've been saying, which really speaks to me, which is what is this reticence to call yourself out, right? I mean, to what is the reluctance to be culpable, responsible, repent, own up? reserve the right to change your opinion, whatever, because everybody on both sides thinks doubling down on whatever mistake they made or whatever they previously thought is towing the party line, right? 
But why can't you say, no, I, I go in for a Republican philosophy and ideology, but Trump was the wrong guy to stump for in me- for many reasons. And on the opposite side, why do you never hear the left say, you know what? The Obama presidency wasn't even close to being as productive and no, yeah. empowered as we all hoped it would be. You never, almost never hear that. And I think in seeing that somebody is owning up, right? There's a great appeal to our humanity in that, right? To air is human is definitely appealing to humanity. Like if there was somebody in the media that I tended to always disagree with, and I heard that person saying, you know what? Uh, I I made a mistake about this and that, but I was right about this and that. I would be more sort of, um, I would be more ready to listen to that person, what that person's got to say. So in other words, it op- it would open up a more productive dialogue between the sides where we could talk and speak with each other rather than at each other and have really productive conversations. And then that sort of thing puts the power back in the people's hands because now we're having fruitful dialogues about these issues, the things we tend to disagree with and all of that stuff. Now we're sort of powered up to take on these things that bother us or make real change, whether we agree or disagree, or sometimes we, sometimes we abide and sometimes we don't, sometimes we're together on certain topics. We, we still, we're still butting heads, whatever the, the, the human nature evolution of all that's going to be right. But how can we really make progress you know, when we're always at loggerheads. And I think a lot of that has to do with Why do you think it. the reticence is there? What's your theory? I have no idea because I'm a ego. simple dude, not ego. that smart. But ego. to me, mm-hmm. I think- But yeah, but e- ego is the result oh, of ego. something else. I mean, what's, why would it, why, I mean, is that just the nature of man or is it the nature of man in a certain way we are right now? Have we always been that unwilling to acquiesce? I don't yeah, know. I so. Acquiesce is a good, <laughs> like it's ego- at the cost of common sense though. It doesn't make yeah. sense. Like if you if you just it's so much more likable of a trait or a quality in somebody to say like I was wrong about that. Mm-hmm. Wouldn't you be more drawn to that person if they tended to admit when they fouled if, up? If if I be, if I believed it, if I thought it wasn't Genuine. an act, absolutely. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Yeah. You know, so I I would just think I would be so much more I would probably be inclined to tune into Fox News if I heard that sort of dialogue once in a while. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? I, ju- I, oh, sorry. Yeah, no, that's, that's, you know, and then I'd be, I, then I would be more open too, because again, the, there, there is a lot of hypocrisy in that. I'm already kind of stuck in my ways. I don't really want to, I want to be more in tune with real conversation rather than doubling down. I already know you're going to be hateful <laughs> about this or right, you're right. not going to, you know, you're not going to admit when you've aired or whatever, you know what I mean? Like, I, I don't want to, it's just I tell not you what, a, though. I don't want to even hear about the Thanksgiving at the uh, Moriarty house. <laughs> once DeSantis is the nominee. It's because, usually pretty polite. Don't, I, don't don't think it's, I don't know if he's going to, I don't even know. I don't think it's, I, don't, I, don't well, think it's I saw good. yesterday that the Florida was at the Senate or the house uh, uh, is proposing or signed a, a bill saying the 10 commandments in every public schoolroom. Oh, is that I, what, is I, that I, what they, oh my yeah, goodness. No, old school. I, I cannot fathom how anybody old school. would, would support that. Yeah. I it's mean, not, that's not, I mean, that's not the DeSantis I support, but I can, I, but this is the, this is the destruction of, um, of hyper-partisan primary yes. politics is that you have to, he's Trump is actually playing to the left. Like Trump is actually very much is actually. playing is to actually. the left. I would say beyond left of center. In some it would be way. hilarious if I, he won because he was more left than 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 DeSantis. Yeah, right. Exactly. The fact that he's able to run <laughs> is ridiculous. But let's oh, yeah. keep going. Right. But, but so I think DeSantis is actually just trying to. T- I mean, that's why a lot of people think he hasn't even declared yet because he's trying to rack up a bunch of very conservative victories in Florida so he can go to Iowa and the other evangelical states, South Carolina and other places, and be like, look what I've done there. But and think this about guy how is, that's this become the, the acceptable way of doing business. That the harm that that is doing to people. 
the the harm that that is doing to the country just so this fucking fat ass and I say this is a fat guy can get his fucking fat pudding fingers into the goddamn fucking oh, yeah, this White is House. like the new thing right about his hands or something right Every, yeah, everyone's focused I'm, 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 I'm just I'm just saying that think about the fact that that's we've normalized that to the point that we're just talking political strategies like well he's doing that it's like yeah but he's hurting people yeah he's causing rifts in the country just so he can get what he as an individual wants I think that that's it's hardly possible. exclusive to him but I think that you're right. I agree. I agree with you 100%. Every, all yeah, of them do it. Right. I, I think I generally agree with you. And I should say, like, I can rattle off a ton of people that I'd rather be president than the DeSantis. I'm behind DeSantis because out of the field of people that are being presented with, he sure. seems to be by far the best one. And I'll say this right now. If they put Trump and Biden up and this is what's going to happen again, I will do whatever I can um, within, you know, financially. I'll, so it's like, what, $7,000 a person. I will donate to any third party candidate that blows this entire thing up. I will. I will do yeah. everything I can to bring as much attention to bring as much chaos to that election. And I think a lot of people are right on down with it. What I, hey, I, I already got my Moriarty Reagan bumper sticker. You know, sorry. <laughs> I got my Moriarty Reagan. You guys should run. Thank you. Yeah. I, well, uh, Chris is not eligible yet, but maybe, maybe we'll run. Oh, in, oh in that's the future. right. He's not. But why don't you get the guy who beat the shit out of him in boxing? He'll be yeah. a good one. <laughs> <for you. laughs> I, I am. If they think that I'm going to, I'm not voting for a Trump and I'm not voting for Biden. There's just no right. way. And in fact, I'm much more of a no on Biden than I am on Trump, but I'm a no on both of them. Um, in this age of social media, we might have a chance at a third party for the first time. Yeah, right. Well, this is, this is the whole thing. It's like I see Marianne Williamson, who's interesting. She has no chance of winning the primary, but it's like people yeah. make fun of her. But I'm like, isn't that nice that someone's running on like love? Isn't that cool? Like to hear some. It, some would, be, it would be nice if she was genuine. But if you've heard what she's like to her yeah, staff, she's apparently she's an asshole. Oh, wow. And I, I heard that also so. about Katie Porter and other people that are running for various offices. Yeah, that's true. But then. Um, you know, so it's like for me, I just I look at the, the holistic situation and I'm like, if you give me Biden and Trump again, if that is literally what's going to happen. I'm not only voting for the other person, I'm going to do everything I can to bring again 1912, 1992 style chaos to this election where like and right. I do believe that like a third party would get on the stage this time. I think I think the rules are you need 10 percent. Gary Johnson just had missed in 2016 and he obviously brought a lot of chaos in Jill Stein but this is chaos more like Teddy Roosevelt actually beating Taft out in 1912 1912 right. I think is the only two elections ever where the second party or a third party was in second place so I, I think there's Ross Perot be... probably would have won if he would have stayed in right wasn't that the whole thing um who, oh who would have won uh, sorry Perot in 92 oh, yeah, he Perot, was yeah, doing Perot great Perot and dropped, just dropped yeah but, well he he had like this black helicopter moment I don't know if people remember like he he was going kind of crazy that summer of 1992. I think he was saying like people were following him and doing all this. And then he dropped out and then he came back in. But he was pulling at 20 something percent, which is substantial. Yeah. I mean, if you're pulling at 20, 20 something percent going into going into the the um, the debates, yeah. you can win. I mean, you could definitely turn enough people around to just be like, look at the and that's all that person has to do is be like, look Incredible. at these fucking idiots. Mm -hmm. You right. just have right. to get on the stage and then you just have to be like, it's it's so obvious what you need to do, but what's but what's sad about the outcome, although I wouldn't mind it because I want I want to teach the American power centers a lesson is that that would probably give the election to Trump. But what actually probably more likely happen is no one would hit 270 electoral votes and then it would go to the mm. Congress, which is what happened, I think, in 1876 when Hayes became president, Rutherford B. Oh, yeah. Hayes. And um, that's going to be the most chaotic situation you've ever seen in your fucking life. And if that's what John we have, Stewart, third party, would you teach? vote for John Stewart, a third party? John, not John. I don't want John Stewart. I would. No. I definitely 100 mm -hmm. would. John Stewart's not not centrist. Like I want someone. No, that's he's truly really not moderate, centrist. You know? That's true. Who, who would you vote? Who would you want as the third party? Probably some random businessman. That's no that, one, you know, okay. no, I, no I think one. like there's that Rama Ra, Ramaswamy guy who's running as a Republican, the Indian guy who's running as GOP, but he comes off as somewhat centrist to me. Like he would be pretty interesting, but I think it's got to be someone like the old Starbucks guy that was going to run for third party. It's got to be someone that puts on his bulletproof vest, realizes that he's going to get a ton of shit and probably get blamed for the outcome of the election. But do yes. it. Good point. But do it anyway. Right. To teach everyone a lesson, an important lesson in giving us candidates that matter and finally make them pay right by being like well neither of you will win then and at the very right. least we're going to not get to 270 and then the house is going to pick some fucking random person like yeah. Mitt Romney or some shit and you're going to I'm going to show up upset. for the rest of this topic and show I'm so sorry to derail it but I have to ask Colin yeah. one question 
Snake Eyes, Hawk, or Scarlet, which one would you vote for as the president? Snake Eyes, Scarlet. Snake Eyes doesn't talk, so it would be hard for us to communicate. Hawk, I don't like the militarism. I'm going to go with Scarlet. We need a we need a, a female president. I'd like to see how a female president did. You know? Okay. Yeah. I would go for Scarlet. Yeah. How about you, Gene? Uh, I would go with Snake Eyes because I'm tired of hearing about presidents. So. <laughs> that would be our first Asian president. Yes. It, it would be. Yes, it would be. Yeah. yeah. Too bad, Andrew Yang. You know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh my yeah. God. Dagan. I go Snake Eyes, but I think you're erring by not uh, including Doc or Roadblock or somebody. You don't have any black people in this. Yeah, fuck it. I'll, I'll, I'll doesn't it. Zatanna or true. Zartan change color? Yeah, Zartan. Yeah. Right, put Zartan in there. Yeah, so he could just, depending on the situation, he's like, hey, I'm a black guy today. <laughs> right, exactly. You know, whatever whatever the situation calls for. <laughs> I like All that. Right, I'm nice, shutting nice up. Nice I'm save. Sorry. Nice save. All right. Uh, Gene, let's go to you and uh, get to your topic. Yeah, that was subscription services. Anyways. Yeah. <laughs> That was fun. That was. Uh, uh, yeah. By the way, I should have asked. Are you okay, Jaffe? Going off of your topic now? Are we? Are you satisfied? Oh fuck yeah! Okay. I'm so sorry. People in the listening are like, "Are we?" God, I highly doubt yes. that, dude. I bet you people are very engaged. In the that, was fun. that was and fun. And we'll be back with the black pill in just a second. Gene Park's <laughs> coming up. He's going to show us how to make shakes that don't put on a lot of weight, but you're going to love for your Fourth of July barbecue. We'll see you in a minute. <laughs> very <laughs> I'm good. This Fuck podcast it, we're is pretty out what 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 we all expected it to be, which is great. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, yeah, my birthday or my, my fuck, my topic is birthday parties. Um, and I thought about this because I am again watching Succession and I just finished an episode where uh, the kind of protagonist Kendall Roy uh, was having his 40th birthday party. And, you know, he's a billionaire, uh, so it was very uh, lavish, but it was also really stupid. Uh, spoilers for the birthday party, I guess. But like, you know, the entrance to the birthday party was a big old v- vaginal tunnel. And mm-hmm. which is which would be his mom's tunnel, basically, right? His mom's vagina, you know, because well, it's he's about, going back in. Wow. Huh? Oh God! Well, yeah, yeah you're now. basically <laughs> going back in, I guess. But then you, well, you're you're being exited out into the party experience, and then you're seeing the rest of his life. So he built a treehouse. Oh, that was I like see, a VIP I see. section. Ooh, that's cool. He's obsessed with '90s rap, so he he hired a, a, a group called the Tiny Wu Tang, which is a bunch of children doing Wu Tang <laughs> covers. Um, and it made me think about birthday parties that I've had because I have never really been into. Well, when I was a kid, I wasn't into birthday parties, right? Uh, but as I got older, and uh, the, the the sense of mortality started to creep up on me, I feel like I wanted to kind of celebrate surviving another year. I've always I've always kind mm. of framed my my adult birthday parties as survival that i made it you know uh, you know and the last birthday party i had was when i was 34 this was my last year in hawaii and you know uh, this is not, this is something that people could easily find out about me if they look at my instagram but it was actually uh, hosted by the trump hotel in, in waikiki oh uh, they reached out to me because they knew that my birthday parties were like an event like like hundreds of people would actually go um, so I had this massive birthday party at like a, a balcony at an Trump hotel that they, they helped, they helped set everything out. They gave me a DJ, they had fucking fireworks. Uh, and it was like sponsored by Picardi. Um, and it was it, like, I felt so indulgent, you know, like, like, like my, my attorney came by and, and he brought a breathalyzer because as I mentioned before that I've actually gotten arrested twice for drunk driving. So my attorney was watching out for me and he gave me a breathalyzer and I was 0.36, which is like, like medically, <laughs> yeah, I should have been insane. comatose. <laughs> it's, 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 uh, yeah, 0.08 <laughs> is, the, is the drunk, is the blood alcohol limit. And I was 0.36. Yeah, that's like was you could like, be passed out or dead. There was barely any blood in your blood at that point. <laughs> exactly. I saw, so like he was like, you should be medically comatose according to the Stanford me- Medical School here. And I was like, fuck yeah, you know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> You know, and I've had a lot of other birthday parties. Uh, it's always been like there was there was one where uh, I it was all karaoke, and but you had to pay for it. But if you came in with the tag that says "Hi, I'm with Gene Park," um, you would just get a free song, no problem. Nice. Um, I used to have lotteries or or like like contests where people win like like literal flights to like like different destinations. Who are you? <laughs> because the airlines you suddenly because sound like the, you're like fucking Usher yeah, or something. James Bond, basically, his stories right, are what? 
Yeah, because the airlines would like want to like like pitch in. They're like, oh, like like this is a great way to like market like our airline, you know. So there was so, like Hawaiian mm-hmm. Airlines and Alaska Airlines would, would like pitch in like free flights, and like the Marriott would like say, okay, here here's a free a free three night stay or whatever locally or whatever. It was it was a lot of fun. Um, so I just wanted to hear about other people's uh, birthday experiences because I've had like, like no. I've had weird I'm ones. not going to compete with any of that. <laughs> but you're David Jaffe, man. Come on. I, I, I don't know who you are. I'm not even fucking with you. It's like, who has birthday parties? Like, oh, yeah, I got some free fucking flights and I gave them away. It's like if Tom Hanks had a birthday party, I get it. Yeah. But I don't, I can't speak now. Go ahead. <laughs> I've only, I'm shamed. I've only had uh, one adult birthday party of mm. consequence, and that was when I turned 30. Mm. And um, I went to Kentucky, did the bourbon trail with a bunch of my friends and uh, did and my friend Eric, who's a friend of the show. People might be familiar with the bartender and bar owner. He just has a lot of connections. So we got into a lot of or a few places that don't even do tours, which was awesome and just buying bourbon. And I remember just sending just packing bags up and going to CVS to get the the bubble wrap and wrapping everything up and just checking everything and hoping for the best and everything arriving and just spending so much money on bourbon. But I must say that I, this surprises some people because I'm an, I guess an entertainer in quotes, but I don't really want attention or like it. Mm. And I want my creations to get attention and love and all that. I think that's awesome. But for me personally, when I gather and I don't really want it to be about me, it's very uncomfortable. Like my wedding is in October and I don't really want to, you know, be the center of attention. I have to kind of swallow because that's what the day is all about. You're supposed to be celebrating yourself, but that's very unnatural for me. Mm-hmm. So I've decided that for my, well, on my 30th birthday, I said that I would do it again or do something big on my 40th birthday. And I, I turned 39 in October. So it would be October, 2024 is when I turned 40. And uh, I think I'll do something again just to kind of force myself into the, it's okay to kind of be the center of attention once in a while, or to ask people you love and care about to celebrate something with you. But I'm very, I'm very wary of doing that. I, it's the same reason why I don't like asking people for favors. Mm-hmm. I don't like asking people to do things for me. I just don't like really putting myself out there. I think a lot of that is just self-consciousness too, you know? So yeah, not yeah, too many experiences. I'm... Certainly nothing as audacious as you described, but that's usually the case with your stories on this show. Yes. I love it, Gene. Yeah. Um, I don't know where my ego came from for, for this desire to like have like huge birthday parties that celebrate me. Like, 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 like these hundred people are here for me. That's a birthday. It's a birthday. I don't even think I know a hundred people. That's the That's nature the thing, of a you know? birthday. Treat yeah. yourself. Well, I mean, that, it, it kind of goes back to, uh, so my birthday parties would be so big that it kind of goes back to like, you know, what I would say when I defended Colin, uh, where it's like, you know, I would have people text me and says, you know, like if that person is going to be there at your party, I'm not fucking going. Oh yeah. And I'm like, so I've always had this experience where That's like, awful. I know people that other people in my life hate and they just don't want to be like associated with them at all. Um, so that's why, like, whatever happened with me and Colin back back in back last year in April, which is about a year ago, actually. The, the happy anniversary, Colin. Happy anniversary. Yeah. Uh, that that was, was not a, a new on, experience. You went on Colin's show and people gave you shit. Exactly. And then I went in your show and then and then and then we talked about it for a bit, right? <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Once but, I turn off the camera, I forget everything. Yeah, yeah, was yeah. Said. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm with remember you. now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah but I, so that's why I was like, this is not a new experience for me. Like, like people being mad that I'm with, with that I'm hanging with someone, or like they're at my party, or they're like in my within my tent of life. You know. Uh, so, but but that's because the birthday parties gave me that experience, and it it really taught me a lot about the nature of people. It's um, crazy that anyone thinks they have that kind of ownership over your life. It's weird. It's weird. It's very oh, weird. Yeah, it's very yeah. off putting. If anyone came to me and was like, oh, you got to what are you doing? Are you talking to this person? I mean, <laughs> literally eat my asshole. If you think you're yeah. going to tell me like who I can interact with and what I'm going to do with insanity my life. To you, me. People know me too well to even bring, do that shit to me. You know, yeah. like, no, no way. I'm not going to. Yeah. That. Well, clearly people didn't know me well enough uh, and they feel <laughs> like that they have some kind of agency in my life to tell me, like, don't invite that person to your birthday party or don't go on that person's podcast. It's so ugly. Um, it's such ugly behavior. It's weird. Yeah. But I, I do. I, you know, I like my yeah. Facebook. had. I actually hit the max for friends on Facebook, which oh. is 5000 people. Oh, nice. shit. Yeah. So then I would just like sh- create a Facebook event when that was a fucking thing. Right. Remember those? 
and then I would just invite like a, like 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 a thousand people or whatever like to my birthday parties. And that's- do you think you're just inherently likable? Like, is there something about you that gets you all those friends that you're like, that's one of my superpowers? I I, I think so. I, you're very I, likable. I, 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 if I'm gonna give myself, but, a yeah, credit. but is it conscious? Like, do you go, oh, I just won the lottery on likability, or do you have to go? Pretend I'm listening to this boring fucking person because that's what it is to be a nice person. I mean, what what is the what's the secret sauce? I, I developed the skill. Uh, I developed it early on when I was when I was drinking at an early age in high school, um, and okay. I, I I was still learning to be a journalist because I was an intern at the local paper. Uh, so I was learning to talk to other people, and the way oh, okay. I kind of uh, built up my ability to talk to other people was I'll be go to, I'll go to hotel bars and I will flirt with older women. Um, Cougars, and you would do that as a te- as a as a as, as an sixteen year old boy. Yes, um, okay. and so, because there there would be no stakes there. I'm not interested in like sleeping with fifty year old women, That's right? Brilliant. But but so like like the, there's no loss for me there, right? Yeah, so it's like there's no fun. risk at all socially, <laughs> other than you know potential pedophilia on their on their end or whatever, you know. <laughs> Did you ever have sex with one of these women? Uh, it was, was only say yes, potential pedophilia on their end. <laughs> Reverse. <laughs> That's yeah, hot, yeah, yeah. I, 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 like, like, there's me showing my leg, you know, as a boy. You there know? you go. Um, as a supple boy. Um, <laughs> Jesus. Oh, not supple. What the fuck were these 50 year old women into? Let me see your legs. You're getting weird, so, man. I did not I hook up it. with any, like, like, older folks but i did uh-huh. like what it was like 16 and like 21 or 22 sure. you know it's like betty uh-huh. Draper in fucking mad men with the neighbor boy mm. you know, that weird, so, yeah that yeah. weird shit but yeah yes, i forgot about that arc good one yeah, yeah I, it turns out she was actually married too so i was actually involved in an extramarital affair in high school uh which was <laughs> a little excellent gene, you're, you're a little early life gene you're like i know you're on the, you're on the run my friend that in you, life yeah you're so fascinating you know you're the kind of person when, when i had you on the show it was so fun but i didn't i i talked to people it's actually funny with both you and jaffe where like we've become friends mm-hmm. that doesn't always yeah. happen with people but i i i always was happy that Jaffe liked me back when I was at IGN because like, he he had such oh, yeah. a brusque um, persona and reputation that like <laughs> if he was cool with you, I was like I felt so like okay because I was like oh David Jaffe likes me that's good but goddamn right but when uh, <laughs> well, Gene when you be, when we became friends I was like oh Gene like it was like oh Gene Park wants to be friends with me like I'm cool with Gene Park and so I was I was you have that kind of um, that nature to me where it's like you want to be friends with you. You yeah. want to know you. you magnetism, have that. a magnetism. Magnetism is, exa- is exactly the word, right? Yeah. So when I would have these birthday parties, there would actually be like traffic, like outside the club, and like so, like in Hawaii, like like so I was jealous. a desired like like person to like have events with, like so like a lot of clubs would like, you know, there would be like an RFP out. Uh, I would put out a fucking RFP out, and then like the different different part of the clubs would like like r- 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 like pitch ideas of of parties to me and. Trump Trump won that that year. The, the Trump White Kiki won oh that year, God. you know, and uh, because they they said, yeah, we can give you a whole step and repeat banner wall and everything for the event. Thanks for legitimizing him, Gene. Appreciate yeah, it. exactly. You yeah, and Joe yeah. Scarborough, and yeah, yeah, <laughs> me and Joe, me and Joe and Mika, and we, Mika. we all we all helped out. <laughs> um, um, yeah, go ahead, at that time, I didn't even like Trump because Trump Trump was that that was before he became president or he even started running. That this was, but this was during mm-hmm. his whole birther nonsense. Nonsense. Oh yeah, and yeah, yeah. I was the reporter in Hawaii who was tasked to wait for his fucking invest- private investigators to come and like find the birth certificate so i was at the office where the birth certificate was speaking of birthdays the obama's birth certificate and i stayed i camped out there for like like two weeks straight like that's all i did was just fucking hang out in this office and nobody ever came and that, that's how we knew that trump was a liar because he just said that he was going to send investigators and nobody ever came the birth yeah, certificate was right there one of many like things right he lied next about. to me Wow. You know? yeah. Wow. Didn't you publish it in your paper then and go, well, here it is. Yeah. I mean, we have it. It's no problem. It was, it was not a, not a right. big deal. Like it, it, it's in Hawaii, you know? So that's amazing. Yeah. Anyways, Dick, where are you on this uh, birthday, birthday parties? parties. <laughs> yeah. Let Adult me pick up the parties. baton here. I mean, I'm at a place in my life where I love Jean's overindulgence with these birthday party stories. Cause it's been, birthdays have been a journey for me. First of all, I turned 50 late this mm. year, which is just we just talked about that last podcast. I'm not even sure I want to go on that on that tangent. Let's go in a different direction. 
Congratulations. So, Be- being old uh, is a privilege, as I've learned. That's you know? true. Like, Absolutely. As, as I've learned, like, I'm, glad, I'm glad that I have not, now have the opportunity, I get the, the new opportunity to get old. So, you know, I can't wait to get to hit 50 at this point. Yeah, really? Yes. I guess. Well, not really. No, but you know. <laughs> You're just trying to make me it's feel better, better. It's better than not hitting 50. That's what I'd say. Right. right. That's what right. Jaffe would say. Yeah. Better than the alternative. I do like that philosophy. That's simple. That's a nice yeah. way to embrace it. Think back to when we were kids, right? It was so simple. Like it was enough for us to have, maybe we had the birthday party with the friends at Chuck E. Cheese. We had the at home party with the family. They came and had a mm-hmm. meal. Mom would make the Duncan Hines strawberry cake with the white frosting. That was always my, always my choice. And you, you get treated for a day, you get toys, you get presents, maybe you get the stuff you ask for. It's enough. And then with my Peter Pan syndrome, probably by my, certainly by my early 20s, I was already really over birthdays and they generally bummed me out. But then I realized something maybe in the last, just in the last two or three years, like think about the nature of birthdays. It's such a sweet thing, right? And then first of all, it's, we have varying levels of family and, and you know, sort of lifestyles and all that kind of thing. But for the most part, it applies to everybody. So having a birthday says whether you're the most insignificant schlub or you're a super important VIP type person in life, everybody gets their day every 365 days where it's about them. It's kind of, it's really kind of a cool thing. So in this unpleasant world we have to vie with all this shit we get that one day to look forward to where we could just be the center of attention and that's why i embrace this philosophy of just stop thinking about the number and just enjoy it right Mm -hmm. now yes as gene said earlier it's inevitable with each birthday we're one step closer to death maybe like kyle you don't really enjoy being the center of attention And there's this other weird thing with birthdays too that probably became apparent to me many years ago is that you're kind of imposing on people because it's one of those, it's that one day a year, right? Where holidays, it's something for everybody. It's a give and take, but you're asking Mm. your, your closest friends and family to just give of themselves without receiving. And it is an imposition. In a way, right? So I think just being aware of that is kind of like, I think that's why I got bummed out for years for my birthday. I would find Mm -hmm. myself getting particularly sad, oddly enough, in the singing of the happy birthday. Lights go out, candles get lit, gather around the table. That's when I would get the saddest. And then I realized that's when it's the most obvious that you're really imposing on these people. What, whether who, you know, whoever it is, wife, kids, in-laws, parents, siblings, whatever. But it's really important to enjoy that one, that one day because it's just a simple celebration. It's just celebrating the fact that you're here, that you're, that you were born. So it's, it's super important. The other thing I thought of with birthdays, which horrified me when the kids were little Mm. was, oh my God. I I remember being plagued by this, like really haunted by this idea of what if nobody shows up for their birthdays? Oh, yeah. Mm. Oh, my God. It's just a nightmare. Like I would rather it so much more happen to me than happen to them. Like we're at Chuck E. Cheese or maybe just a birthday party at home in the yard. It's like what if nobody shows up? Because especially when they're really young preschool through early Mm. elementary school years, you there's no telling who's really going to come. You could do the RSVP and all of that, but there's really no telling who's going to show up to this thing. So that was always the biggest nightmare. I was like, oh my God, can you imagine how bad my little four-year-old is going to feel if mm, nobody yeah, if, it, if you have kids, you know that. You, you just know, know that. <laughs> like, please go well. Oh my God. Because this, this, is, this is as much as we want to say it's not important. <laughs> the, the formative wallop that that child will take and be have I mean that's that'll that's one of the five things that will define them through life. Nobody came to my six year old birthday. Well, I'm a loser. Sad jab. I mean, yeah. I yeah. mean, I, you consider the craziest. I mean, things. I would fucking hire kids to come. Exactly. If I thought you would grease some palms. Here's twenty bucks. You're goddamn right. Just come. You're goddamn right. You know, just yeah. show up for this thing. 
Yeah, imagine if I had my 34th birthday at Trump Hotel and like two people showed up. <laughs> See, that's like, the just... opposite. You got caught. But then that's your fault, Jim. <laughs> it would be cool. Fault. If yeah. 34 takes some responsibility, no one likes you. <laughs> if you're four, come on. You know, that's the dad's fault. That's sure. always, that is at the heart of the two things at the heart of my. I, I, other than really authentically not wanting to be the center of attention is like you're always afraid of people not wanting to or putting yourself out there and not being reciprocated. Yeah. I even feel that way about my wedding in some way. Like you don't know who's going to say yes or no. Right. And then this the the second thing is uh, I, I just um, I don't really get off on getting older. It makes me sad. So it's like not a day that I'm really like I'm. It's cool to have a day about about you where you can go out to dinner in a nice place or get some presents or whatever. I don't really want anything from anyone. I don't need anything. It's just I'm very boring, but it's just like. It's Why does it make you sad? I'm curious because both of you guys um, seem to have an issue with getting older. I know you're saying that, Dagan, you're getting better with it. But a little bit. I, I mean, I think our culture is so horrifically ageist mm. um, is. that I am assuming part of it is that, if not all of it, because what's the problem getting older? You've got a great company, a great job, a great person in your life that you love, that loves you back. And you get to continue the adventure with all these wonderful things. What is it about getting older that troubles you? I think I it's like, oh, sorry, given the, the the recent topics that Colin has had. I feel like it's a, it's a, the the march to death, yeah, and, and, and potential oblivion. Yeah, is, exactly. Is, is exactly. It, it, there is there is an element of that. Although to me, it's like the it's the inherent root sadness of nostalgia. Nostalgia meaning painful memory, right? Mm. And mm. Um, there's something about I'm very wistful. As a person, I just am. I, I think it's why I'm so obsessed with history and so obsessed with time. And people are often really impressed. Like, how do you know when these things happen? Like, how do you just know these dates and these linear? And I'm like, everything kind of has its place in my mind. Every year kind of has its place. And I pull memories out and I pull things and events out, both in this history and my own life. And so when you're putting it's like year 39 or year 38 in the books and you're never going back to it, it's why I think New Year's is inherently depressing too not because it's not exciting to go to the future but because it's like well you're never going back that's a good comparison and i yeah. think there's something kind of, of a bummer about that jaffe sent i just put some i put something in the chat for you yeah, let me see here <laughs> what is this what is this it's, it's awesome you'll love it you'll be okay. great at it daily oh yeah oh it's, 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 yeah i've seen people play this on um on youtube this dude i would it's be good awesome at this. i would be very good at this you would I'm yep. going to keep this up. This is awesome. Thank you. Yeah, keep this up. Yeah, this is yep. good shit because I, I follow some of those guys. app. One of the, yeah, yeah. Chrono, chron, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, And I follow some of these guys. There's some re weird YouTube rabbit holes I've gone down. And one of them is the people that just know where things are based on yeah. pictures. And they, they yes. literally find where the picture was taken in Street View. Yeah. And in this, you can zoom in and they're like, I think this is if you don't know if you're listening, right, it's just like it gives you pictures. And it's like, where do you think this sits on the timeline of history? Mm -hmm. But you can zoom in. So it's like this feels like 1960. But then you zoom into a bumper sticker that's talking about K-Rock and you're like, OK, wait, a minute. right, right. That's this, you know, it's really interesting. It's a really fascinating thing to look at a picture and see what you can suss out of it. Mm -hmm. But any, anyway, sorry. No, it's all that, good. I, it, I love I mean, yeah. I love that. It's so funny because I've seen I've wanted to look into that because I do feel like I'd be pretty good at that. The map yeah. stuff I may be might be decent at, but I don't I don't think so. But um, so, yeah, I just I think with as, as a Jaffe to answer your question as a time appreciator. I feel that the the passing, the permanent marking of the time, all passing time is permanent. The moments we're spending right now are permanently passed the moment that they're gone. But the marking of it with like a year, a date, all that is very wistful for me. Mm. It's always been. I don't. It's not about getting older necessarily. It's about what is. I know what wistful means. I thought, but now I don't. What well, it's is like, it's like mean? you know, you're. It's like an. an you're wishful and airy, like thinking and and kind of wanting and longing, you know. And oh, okay, there, it is a positive right. desire to right. well, think about those yeah, times. Exactly. And, it's like you're kind of reminiscing. Uh, okay, and it's it's a it's kind of a bummer from that perspective for me, just because it's mm -hmm. like 1994 is gone or something. I remember thinking those things even when I was a kid. And it's not yep, about not being happy to be in 1995. It's just being like, oh, I'll never 1994 will forever be a memory. And it even has a complexion and that yeah. complexion is developed in all of that. And so yeah. I'm, I'm always surprised when people don't have a good feel of time, because I think that that's probably the thing I have the best feel of. I, ha I don't have a feel, a great feel of direction. I don't have a great feel of these other things with time. I definitely can feel that. So I love this suggestion. And um I love this topic. Was there anything else you wanted to touch on before we move on to the final topic, Gene? 
Uh, no, not really. All right. Just want to make sure. I, 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 I want to. I, I want to just. Oh, go no, ahead. No, go I, I just like to make sure people are done before you know. I, I just steal the show. I, I just wanted to mention right. then when you're saying you're sad about Happy Birthday and the candles. If you ever watch uh, Trevor Noah, I don't know if this was his stand up or this was on The Daily Show, but he was talking about when he came from South Africa. Happy Birthday. The song is you know what they sing is very different, and he had also grown up with like Mickey Mouse and Donald, mm-hmm. where it's like Happy Birthday, Happy Birthday. You know, it's very fun. Yeah. And the first time he comes to America, it's like this funeral dirge. If you actually listen to Happy Birthday, it's, it's like a sad song. Dun, it dun, is. Dun, 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 dun. And he's like, what the fuck is this? So maybe it's sad because it's like, change the fucking music. Yeah, it's it is kind of a beat. sad song. You're right. Yeah. And it's also licensed too. So that, right. that, that's why when you go to like Outback right. Steakhouse, they sing Happy Birthday, Happy, Happy yeah. Birthday. <laughs> Yeah. So it actually sounds cheerier, you know? Yeah, it does. You're right. We need we need a new song. Like why? Ha- we have a tradition. Yeah. I think we've gone into it on the show, but if you guys don't know, we have a tradition in our family where we all sing happy birthday to the person and start at different times. Really? <laughs> so it's like, yeah. it's like utterly, ca- it's utter chaos. It was a tradition started by my yeah. uncle Mike many years ago, and we've just all <laughs> adapted it over the decades. So like, it's just this chaos of, and it's, it's just like, no one says anything. It's, it's just like what you do. Yeah, for some reason, and it just makes That's it awesome. funny. So it takes yeah. that melancholy song, it just makes it a little more. Yeah, good. it's good. Fun, <laughs> I guess. All right, Dave, let's go on to you for our final topic. Uh, oh, you ready to talk about something important? Yes, for a change. All right, so talk about switching gears from all this important stuff we've been talking about. But it's a little bit of a shallow topic, but we'll have fun with it. I wanted to talk to you guys about tattoos. Mm. And here's why it's on my mind and a little selfish because I really do genuinely want to get your input on this. So let me tell you where I'm at. So I'm a dude, started skateboarding when I was early in my teens and always really. And so, you know, the subculture, hip hop, art, graffiti, all these type of things. Right. And but I never had a tattoo. I don't have a single tattoo. And over the years. I guess with every passing year, it kind of becomes, on one hand, a point of pride that I'm kind of unblemished without any tattoos. It's also somebody, it's also a very unique quality I find for, especially for the friends I grew up with, the friends I have now. There's not too many people that came up loving the things I love that just don't have a tattoo. It's kind of strange, but I kind of like it in a way. And with every passing year, it becomes a little more glorified in my own head, right? That I don't, but at the same time, I have vetted out the tattoos that I've always wanted are still the tattoos I would still get. So there's been a, there's been a great vetting over the years and there's four or five of them that are very specific that are definitely the tattoos I want. And that vision has kind of dovetailed with the fact that I think I would like to have enough tattoos to have two sleeves. I don't want neck tattoos. I don't want, face tattoos, obviously. I'm not interested in tattoos on the trunk of my body necessarily or my legs, but I very I am drawn to the look of sleeves, especially the tattoos that I would get that are meaningful to me to me. I also would never, as an artist, design my own tattoos. I think you have you have it two ways with artists. There's the artist that would say I could only have tattoos that I design. And then there's the other artist, which is more my flavor, which would be like, I can't even look at something I drew two hours ago. There's no Mm -hmm. way I'm designing my own tattoo. Mm -hmm. I'm way too critical of my own artwork. So I would definitely be, I would definitely get existing things that were meaningful for me. And again, I know those four or five things. And then eventually I'd have to think of some new things probably to cover up two full sleeves. But here's the thing. I'm 49 years old, still don't have a tattoo. Is it too late? Let me pose that first question to you guys. Is it too late? Is it better to just stick to my guns, my existing guns, and just say, all right, you got no tattoos. That's kind of cool. That's unique in its own right. Or do I go in for the tattoos now? Let's go around the horn. Jaffe, I'll start with you. What do you think? I think um, joking aside, well, it's kind of joking, but to be this... To be this deep on that suggests there are other things you should be thinking about that are going on in your head. Um, and I don't mean that in a dickish way, but I'm like, wow, it's just a fucking tattoo, dude. Do it or don't. I mean, it, it's, it's, but the fact that you're not is, I think, fascinating to me. It's like, why is that so, such a big deal? What does it matter? Go get it if you don't like it. 
get rid of it. You can get you can get those laser That's etched true. off you can these get days. Them off. I mean, what, what is it? What, what's the apprehend? What is it? What do you think it represents? No, that you care so much. I don't know. I mean, I am midlife. No, but you have to know because that's the thing. That's the real constellation. I like that's this. the real conversation. I mean, you're challenging. because ultimately the tattoo is a metaphor for what you're struggling with, and the question becomes why. Let's get serious yeah, here. Yeah. Your gut knows. You know yeah. why is it it matters to you. What does it represent? Who are you if you do and if you don't? Okay. So let me start by saying, and I don't know if this helps or not, but put it into context for you, Jeffy. I'm midlife crisising all over the place. I'm midlife crisising. Okay, so that's what this is really about. I think then. it's a big part of it. I see my wife, okay. my wife, who's slightly younger than me, going through it as well because she's never had one. She's always okay. talked about getting. She doesn't want sleeves or anything. She just wants a couple of things. And her desire for tattoos is much different. I think her reasons are different. But I could tell you, right. with my career, with the cars I drive, with where I want to move, just I'm going through the throes of a midlife crisis. I, I'm totally, okay. I admit that. Which is not bad. I mean, that's a process that everybody goes through to some degree. Absolutely. And I think I probably could have went through this a lot earlier, being almost 50. But so in, in some ways, I count myself blessed. And I'm just starting to grapple with this. But with the tattoos, I guess it's that. I always did think it was a little cool. I wore it like a badge of honor that I didn't have them. I went from probably the line of demarcation was probably my mid twenties. By that point, I had I, you would have thought someone like me. I, I'm stereotyping, but would have tattoos. So from that point onward, I was like, oh, this is pretty cool. I don't have tattoos. So now that's been whatever the better part of twenty five years. And it's just like, if I go back on that now, I can only go back on that once. Once I start in the other direction, I, I could get them removed. I could get them covered up. Absolutely. That's that's a reasonable argument. But I think that's the thing. Is it because you're killing a part of you that you thought was cool? <sighs> yeah. I don't even know if it gets that deep. I don't even think don't it gets, gets that deep. deep. I think it's just, I don't know. It's just, it's just almost silly. It's almost like my pettiness. It's like, just whatever, dude. I do... I, I think when I start getting excited about how cool I think it would look, because I want very distinctive things. I'll show you the first image that I would absolutely get. Shel Silverstein, right? For the video guys out there, he's the most mm -hmm. important creative inspiration in, in my life. It, Which one would you get? This from image from where the sidewalk ends. Oh, the looking and over the, the thing. The two kids and the dog at the edge of the cliff. Right. That would be my first tattoo for sure. hundred percent. You should get that right on your stomach. So they're like looking down and the kids are like, what the fuck? <laughs> That's actually kind of a good, oh, I don't know if I can endure. Now, That's, do you guys well, again, have tattoos? It's more pedophilia, but. Everybody have no. tats? Jews and tattoos don't go so well. There's a whole history there. <laughs> <laughs> Is that relevant to you? That you can't be buried, I guess? In the... oh, oh, I'm not Jewish. I'm oh, I thought you were. I was, okay. raised, I thought you were no, I was raised Jew. I'm, I'm atheist agnostic, but no, I don't give a shit. But you, I don't you have them just because. But you're not, you're not Jew, like Jewish is also a, is more than a religion, right? So. Um, it's, it's a deli. Oh, I don't know. People. I mean, it, uh, but I'm saying, were you born? I, yeah. I'm asking, were you born Jewish? I, my, my dad, my dad was Jewish. My mom was Southern Baptist. She converted when she got and, married and, okay. and we were raised Jewish. But by the time I was seven, I'm like, this is ridiculous right on, right stories right. you're telling me. And so I've been an atheist <laughs> agnostic since I was a little Since kid, but right I little. had a bar mitzvah and all that shit. Right, Cause right, I was right. in that culture of my family sure. that was Jewish. Yeah, Judaism yeah. to me represents the, like the fusion of like, it's the, it's the place where for some reason, religion meets culture. In some like in some can, permanent way, yeah, I can yeah. see that. Um, we've we've talked about that before. Like also like Italian uh, culture and, and and tradition. There's there's a lot of similarities, mm -hmm. um, uh, and, and I love that. That's what that's one of the things I did love about the Jewish culture or religion was the um, uh, embracing of debate discussion uh, as as entertainment as part of something that's not only okay but it's acceptable and desired. That's cool baked into the culture and um so there, there's good stuff that i took from it but yeah i was kidding about the tattoos oh, yeah, yeah. i was just curious you know I, I i don't have tattoos i've never had a desire i don't really care gene you i do not i i have had a desire uh the only reason why i haven't had it yet and probably never will is because i never have felt anything was that important in my life that okay. I wanted on my body. You know, one, you never wanted to have like a band or whatever like that. Like, you know, I, I use, I love like 
Nirvana and Guns N' Roses back in the day. But like, I like at this point in my age, I would be like, why do I have a tattoo of of, of them? I'm not I, I'm not even like that much, big of a fan anymore. Um, and uh, culturally, you know, I'm Korean, right? But I was born in Guam. I was born in the Pacific Islands, but I'm also American. And I've, I, there's no there's no iconography within those three different cultures mm. that I feel like that I would like tattoo like put on me. Okay, I did used to joke uh, about how you know like like white people white people would always put like the Asian tattoos mm. or whatever yes. like that their little kanji and characters. <laughs> and it means, oh, it yeah. means air or it means strength or whatever like that. So I really wanted to do a little fancy calligraphy Korean on my body, and it would say kimchi chige, which just means kimchi soup. <laughs> That's it, because I love kimchi soup, and that that, that that I I think that would be important enough to put on my body, but I just never went through with that joke. I love that. Um, I guess my only history with tattoos really is uh, all the women I've dated who had tattoos. Uh, there was one in particular, uh, Kels, uh, who was just cut her her entire arm was covered, and then while while we were dating, she had her boobs tattooed, and I was really upset about that because oh, I was wow. like, I don't, I don't, I don't want your boobs to be covered you know I don't, I don't want to see that you know you want the fleshy it, tone of the breast <laughs> exactly you know I, 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 want, I want the milky tone of the breast right? like you're the, that, that, <laughs> milky sure uh, that uh, um, what's what's the big fucking luncheon meat nipple type the the big fucking a bologna uh, nip uh, 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 bologna nip <laughs> baby no, yeah not bologna <laughs> <laughs> pepperoni a bologna bologna would be no, something you can you imagine she did not yes. have bologna nips they were, they were good nips they were good oh, nips pepperoni <laughs> nips she had the entire astrological zodiac around each one of those pep nips I'll tell you what <laughs> yeah and it was just like all over her nips and I'm like I love your nips I don't want to see like everything else I don't want to I don't want to see a journey or a story or fucking anything right. like around around your boobs. I just want to see your boobs. That's it. That's tough. Yeah, that's a tough. And then we one. broke up, and then she just got even more tattoos. Like her entire chest is covered up. And they all say it. "fuck you, Gene." Yeah, exactly. Like like fuck off. I'm free. I'm liberated from <laughs> from the. That's I don't know if you saw Jean. recently there was a, a tattoo going around, like a picture of a girl's tattoo. She got I think Japanese tattooed on her neck, and I think she thought it said "flowing water," but people were writing to her and saying <laughs> it actually means like tap water the way you use it no yeah like so she has like this really prominent thing and it literally does say flowing and water but the way they use those two things together it means tap water oh yeah. man so. that's a- <laughs> yeah faucet water or whatever oh yeah. faucet water yeah owned yeah yeah uh, yeah, that's why I wanted to do that with, with kimchi soup and people are like oh what is your tattoo man is like, it means kimchi idea. soup I love kimchi soup that's it um I you know I, I love the Bioshock uh, uh, tattoos on the wrists you mm-hmm. know so I, I so that got me into thinking that I might want a wrist tattoo someday. Yeah, Chris has that. But oh, Chris, does he really? Yeah, pretty good. Yeah, the, the, the broken chain that. or whatever. The, oh no shit! Yeah, yeah. okay, yeah. See, I, see, I was gonna go do that, and, and then like me and Chris Regan would just have the same fucking tattoo. Like, how fucking corny would that be? You the know? Secret lovers. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> just, we were just chained to each other, you know. Uh, so yeah, that that's the thing. Like, I wish I had a tattoo. Um, you know, I hung out with punks and skaters all the time too. Uh, but it just wasn't something that I could really like land on. Like the like you know, th- there's some stuff on Guam, but like I really don't like Guam as a culture. Like I you know, like I'm traumatized by my childhood there, so I don't want to think about fucking Guam ever. Sure. Uh, and I'm barely Korean, and you know, like how great would it look if I had like an American flag like uh, like tattooed on me? I don't know. So, <laughs> why not? Like 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 it'd be cool, I guess. But like why though? You know, <laughs> so. Yeah, that's and then, the like, thing. You know, that could have something old English, but like, like, what does it have to do with me or something? You know, um, that's the, it's the yeah. ultimate tribute. It's really rocking something permanent. I mean, I would think everybody gets tattoos for different reasons. You know, they're keepsakes or tributes to somebody that passed away. Or, but for me, it's like, it's the ultimate way to show what you love. It's so mm-hmm. much more than just hanging a poster or you know, decorating your car or decorating your, even decorating your house. Like it's something that you're saying, I have such conviction in Mm -hmm. that I have to have this painted on, on me permanently. Mm -hmm. This is very sad. Yeah. Uh, But I would do this. Okay. God, you don't even want to say the words, right? Cause no, no parent should outlive their children. Mm -hmm. Um, But God forbid that ever happened. You can actually take the ashes and have that mixed into the tattoo ink. I've heard about this. And then I would be like, okay, mm. that I would that do. I heard about that. Uh, because video because then you're just like, yeah, they're just with me all the time, even though, right? That, that I would do. But short of that. Is that, is that right. what inspired God of War? 
No, God of War, that inspiration was insane. It's a totally different story, and I'm happy to tell it if people want to hear it, but that's no. That, the God of War white skin tattoo thing was absolutely the craziest fucking uh, wonderful example of how video games actually get made. It had nothing to do with it. Oh, we should definitely get into that. I'm writing that down. Yeah. Too. Um, yeah, you know I have tattoos, but... You're what's the only about, one here. <clears throat> yeah, I guess so. What's funny yeah. about that is that I got all of them within 18 months when I was like, 19 20 years old and now i'm 38 so i have i i actually want more i've always wanted leg sleeves i think that's like a really inconspicuous thing you can do to just kind of celebrate something and i've thought about doing a i've specifically thought i mean the serious ones i've thought about were a mega man sleeve like a like a one with like some of the robots and stuff which i think would be super cool love it and then something for the first box art the first box are yeah we can have the, <laughs> yeah. Actually, the second one would be even better with, like the weird sick. monocle dr light and yeah. the laser gun but yeah, there's some, uh, something like really cool. I, I what's you know what it is. The reason I haven't done any of it is because and I've even wanted to do things like get the doctor, the Dr. Wiley W, which is like my favorite logo. I love, love that. that logo, as people know, um, and the Cobra logo and other things. But it's like when I was I got all my tattoos at a place called Chameleon in Cambridge, Massachusetts, near Harvard off the red line. Um, and I don't know if it's still there anymore. I don't know, but it was, it was a totally fine place to go. It was good. But when I was a kid and it was also like that nascent 2002, 2003, 2004, um, era where the internet wasn't, you weren't quite doing any research and you were just kind of going in blind and just going on word of mouth and all that. People still do no doubt. But at that age, I always say you don't really know anything. Even if you think you know things, you don't really know anything. So I didn't think twice about going and getting these tattoos and I don't regret them at all, especially because tattoo removal, I don't want to say it's trivial, but it it works pretty well now and it's only going to improve like more and more. So I don't worry about it and I don't regret my tattoos except for what are they? Um, I have on my arms, my my political tattoo. Oh, I guess I'll take this off. Um, yeah, I forgot to I guess show them for people that don't know is I have a We the People on my arm. I got that okay. when I was 19, I think. And then I have Join or Die on my arm here. And okay. uh, Benjamin Franklin Snake. Oh, I here. forgot you had that. Okay. And then I have Moriarty written on my back, which was the first tattoo I got. Hmm. And that's the only one that I would get removed, and I probably will get it removed at some time if I want to use that real estate for something else, because I don't regret having it there. I don't care. But my one regret about having well, Moriarty. You're going to take, your, take your wife's last name, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah it's exactly what I'm going to do. So, so Colin, Colin Watson. Watson. <laughs> and michael watson no way no 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 no. no that's her name that's not yeah that, that is no fucking yeah. way yeah 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 are yeah. you out of your fucking mind that's funny right that we're in a no it's not funny that we're in a fucking simulation <laughs> Come on. that's insane well, it's right. not holmes you're probably yeah, it's, yeah but it's close. when they have their baby they'll name holmes, it holmes right? and you'll be off to the fucking races not bad. Jesus. you know what you're right yeah it's, it's funny she's gonna she wants to take our name i i told her i actually told her i'm i'm traditional in some way like i like nuclear family stuff or whatever and you know the stay-at-home wife and all that that's cool if that's what the woman wants to do but i'm also like do whatever you want whatever you whatever you feel is best so i, I tried to establish in her if like you want to keep your name like you're more than well, I'm not going to offend me at all. But she's like, I like your name. So I was like, OK, so so that's what we're going to do. But um, but yeah, as far as the the, I would only get Moriarty removed on my back if I wanted that space for something else. That's that's my biggest disappointment is I was like, damn, that is such a waste of space because <laughs> you could do some cool back piece or something in the future if you wanted to. But I just I think the minimalism and I have only black work done on my arms and on my back. I think that lack of color is going to allow them to hold up, although they're getting a little they're discoloring and and are they lightning a little bit? I mean, they're old, you know, They've they're getting old, but they'll, they'll while, always be yeah. there. I always remember looking at remember, like, especially old military guys, you'd, they'd be at like a barbecue mm. or something and they'd have like a tattoo peeking through their arm and, you, and it's like an anchor or something. I love that. And stuff. I, I, I thought that was kind of cool. And I, I kind of want my tattoos to turn into that over time as well. Like some story from the past, like and they are yeah. stories from the past. I mean, these came from a moment when I was sure I was going to be a professor of history. You know, like no doubt. And that just goes to show you about how quickly things change because two or three years later, I was working at IGN and exactly um, and how little, you know, when you're a kid. And I say, people get offended when I say that sometimes, but I'm like, you just don't know anything. You just don't. No, you really you don't. There's no listen. Telling. It's crazy specifically how and I've said this in the past. My dad was just right about so many things. Mm-hmm. It's quite impressive. Mm-hmm. And it's like, man, if you just listen, if you but you just don't know. So you no. don't know to listen. And <laughs> that's one of the. Le- so. 
I get nervous now because I'd overthink it. It's like, who's going to do the tattoo? Are they going to fuck it up? And it's like, and the people I would go to now are probably 7,000 times better than the people I went to in Boston. You know, like you'd research them. They probably have this massive waiting list and the fucking deposits and all of this. But I still get, that's what I get nervous about because I know better now. And that's the kind of the irony. I'll tell you what, my yeah. heart's a little sad that you aren't going to get like the three red dashes on your wrist. Oh, from a and then the dark the dash. Yeah. Come on, oh, man. Sure, that's yeah. just begging yeah, that's, uh, to be on your arm. I would like to get like a Cobra logo or something. I thought, uh, I, Dagan knows, I love the Cobra Air Force logo, which is like the Cobra logo with the wings. And uh, oh, I, haven't seen I would one. love to get like some obscure logo like that. that yeah. Like not just the Cobra logo, but something even more, more obscure. And I would love to get this on my chest, like in black, just the W. That'd be so cool. With with the circle, though. Yeah, you got to so yeah, like, yeah, that, that way I can look <laughs> like one of the robots or whatever. And then do my weird, my weird stance. You know, my very yeah, Try to do your pose. Hero um, pose. But yeah, I, I don't. So I don't know, Dig. I, I, it's funny. Like my tattoos, just like my earrings. It's weird. I've had my earrings in for 20 years. You know, like. Wow. It'll be this time. year, you know, so. A couple of um, decades. Yeah. Actually, it was last year. This will be the 21st year. So. Wow. It's like. I just. I went through this. It's it, it, my arms and my earrings and my style. It's like it kind of just froze in like that late new metal rap rock era. And then I was like, no, that's good. And then I just w- walked away from that forever and and came away with it so that my earrings are just part of my body now. Yeah. And, you know, I wash them every day when I'm in the shower. And I don't even think about it. Like, is this some part of my body? Like part of my body. I spin them around and do all the- you don't even think about it. It's like an appendage. And I look at my tattoos the same way. But then I realize I'm a lefty. So. I'm on my phone like this, you know, outside of an office building in San Francisco or something. And people are staring at me. And I'm like, what are you staring at? And then it says join or die in huge letters in my arm. And you just don't think about it. It's know? so odd to stare at tattoos. And like, I don't even understand. I was listening to a guy on YouTube this morning because I knew we were going to be talking about this. And he was, I don't know what he, oh, he was a barber by trade, but he had, he was covered in tattoos. He had the neck. He had some face tattoos. He was really into it. And he was saying like the, the way he gets perceived. And it's like, really still like tattoos have become such a, it's not just going in the Marines and getting a pinup girl or an anchor anymore. Like everybody has tattoos. It's odd not to have them. <clears throat> people still stereotype people by tattoo. It's odd to me. It doesn't make any everything sense. except the face. I agree with. I think you start putting tattoos on your fucking mm-hmm. face. It's I judge. I don't even judge. Yeah. I'm just distracted. I'm distracted. Because it's not it a like play into the norms, the mores of society in some way, you mm-hmm. know, or expect the ramifications of making your of clowning yourself. OK, that's interesting. Yeah, because face tattoos. You're right. They're still something wrong rare. with yeah, them. But it's so they're rare. More they're, rare. They're rare. And it's I guess it's you own that shit. Yeah. It's like you ain't covering that motherfucking. Yeah, thing I did up. used to um, want yeah, if I had right. a son. To give him a face tattoo at a young age, so no one would just fuck with him. (laughs) It's like like that Adam Sandler movie with with, um, Andy Samberg, where they gave him a new Kids on the Block tattoo when he was a kid. That's like one of the major story points of it. And so as he gets older, it like blows up and explodes, and they look like fucking shit. So (laughs) I I love Adam Sandler so much. That movie. That was that. My that's my boy, which was not one of the good ones, but. That superstar is that what it is? Or the don't stop stopping or whatever? No, no, no. Which that movie? was that's my boy. That the that the, oh, it's called yeah, that's, that's my, my boy. boy. Yeah, that's oh, right. Yeah. Okay. That was the one you're talking about is after after the one I'm talking about. Got it. Okay. Um, Kyle, you're one of the rare people that I know with tattoos who always had a very laissez faire attitude towards your tattoos. Like you, you weren't one of those people that went in and just compulsively got more and more. Like my best friend PJ, we'll meet him on the show eventually. He's the illustrated man. I don't think there's a square inch of his body that's not mm. covered in tattoos. He got one and then it was just, you know, that snowball roll. He would let them do whatever they, they wanted on him. Like there were times where like, I think he got his whole sleeve unseen as far as I know, or like just do whatever you like the, the, um, he has a really dope sleeve of a jellyfish. Yes. As, as far as I know, it's like, they just were like, just do whatever you want. Yeah. yeah. It was like that. Uh, some of the stuff is, you know, he w- he's a real big horror buff. So a lot of his are horror mm. images, which and are cool. Iron Maiden. Uh, he has a maiden. T- he has at least one maiden tat. He has a big um, one, yeah. Have you seen Super anybody? Sick. Cause I love it when people send me tattoos from games I worked oh, on. Oh yeah. yeah. Have you, have you seen any like sacred symbols or last media? Yeah. Or? Some people have gotten, we probably have, I mean, maybe more, but like I would say a half dozen people or so have gotten the sacred symbols logo that I've known. And some cool. people have gotten the moon. That's a lot of people cool. have gotten That's the cool. kind of funny face when I was there. 
Oh, I remember. Oh, it, really? I, I remember Greg and I used to talk about getting the IGN logo. I'm so glad I didn't do that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. But we because we were so in love with that place for so long. It's it, but again, it goes to show just that reiterate that underline like how little you know and what you understand and at the time it changes. Yeah. And um, yeah. So it's it's a really interesting topic, Dave. I I I do agree though that the face tattoo is a little off putting. Again, do what you want. I worked with a guy at, a, at um, the deli when I was in high school back in the early 2000s that had a f- head tattoos and he oh. like would shave his head down like me and it sure. would be like oh. there would be like these like tribal designs and then his hair would just grow in and you wouldn't see them and then he would that's shave his head down idea. and it would be that's cool yeah it was pretty that's cool pretty I was cool. like but I Very always ask him I'm like what if you go bald you know what are you going to do you're going to be in a lot of trouble you better hope you don't your hair could be go. a thing because um, it was like not it was not mild. You know, it was like all over right, his right, head, right. but it was a cool way to hide it. <clears throat> yeah, and I also very knew, cool. And there's I don't think it's a super in the style anymore, but there I knew a couple of people that like women, older women that had like uh, tattooed makeup. Um, oh, right. Which is interesting. And you'll, you'll find this funny as an exit as an exit story about my tattoos. Um, my ex-girlfriend and I, we lived in San Francisco and she had a friend that lived in Boston with us when we went to Northeastern. And uh, but I didn't know him very well. And he came out and he was kind of like squirrely and weird to me. And then I find out later because we're going to see him at a wedding. Right. Like this is like a couple of years afterwards. OK. And she's like, oh, he had a problem with you because he thought you were had had stolen Valor tattoos. Oh, basically, when he saw my tattoos, like he what was like, he, she's Valor? like, I, she thought he thought those were like pretending, marine tattoos. Pretending to be in, uh, the fire service oh, military. Oh, right. And, oh, and, and, and uh, I'm like. The Constitution and Benjamin Franklin is really are, uh, what, are you, what are you even talking about? And then I was telling her, I'm like, I actually have two friends, both in the Marines that have this tattooed and both asked me if they could do it, you know, including one of them who is a machine gunner out of a helicopter machine gunner, Dave Smith, shout out, who uh, actually flew a flag in Afghanistan for me and sent it to me, which is awesome. But he has it tattooed and like huge on his chest. So I was I thought you guys would find that funny, like some and that guy fucking sucked. I hated that guy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> loser. I would love to see a serial killer movie about a guy who kills people with tattoos he likes, and then you go into his like fucking apartment, and it's just this mural yeah, he's made. I love that of Ooh. all these fucking cool tattoos and shit. I love that, and that's how they catch him because they're like, wait a yeah. minute, he seems to really like. Yeah, he, like they find the bodies, you know, and the, and the, and these people all have their shit cut off. So yeah, yeah. right, love right. that. Very dark, yeah, that'd be cool. Man. Yeah, that's good oh, shit. Yeah, but colorful. Welcome to my well, what world. do I do, guys? I mean, now. now it's, I have to say too, as a you, you should think I should go in for it now. There, it's been long enough time to vet these. There are two tattoos that eventually got thrown by the wayside. Two specific Star Wars tattoos that I still love my retro <laughs> Star Wars, but Star Wars is just I can't do it anymore. So I think we all. Like, I think well, I don't know about how Jaffe feels, but I think we are. We're all pretty disillusioned with Star. I can't fucking do Star Wars. I'm, I I can't wait to see your Ray Skywalker. Uh, <laughs> oh my god, dude! <laughs> I, I I really try my hardest not to talk about Star Wars anymore because the audience, I think, parts of it are getting mad at me because it's like just beating the shit out of it. And I think they're tired of hearing it, so I try to just not even say anything anymore. Yeah, but Star Wars to me is like pizza. It's Star Wars. Yeah, I'm grateful. I was a kid of the '70s and '80s, just like you. And, you know, we had long, dry seasons where we had nothing. Yes. So am I OK with the fact that every now and then we get a, you know, it's like James Bond. They're not all good. But it's fucking James Bond. What do you want? You get it in your life. I'm grateful. Right on. I like your attitude. So, you know, Dig, yeah. I think you should get your tattoos. Maybe Mostly I because I think that I really do think it's low, low risk at this point. I'm not trying to overstate it. But tattoo removal, I, I've seen things on it like and, and you can even see like the, the like they're. It works, like it's coming off people's bodies. It takes time. I could time never see getting them. Oh, my, my friend, but I'm my saying, if you Kanye ever regret it, then there is no reason not to do it because yeah, there yeah. really isn't. My yeah, friend has a Kanye cool. West tattoo, and she's a Jew. Oh no! Wow! Oh, and she's removing so, it. Yeah, so yeah, she yeah. had to get it removed. Yeah, um, that sucks. I mean, but that's that's the point I'm making, Dave. Is that yeah, he's you okay would with the Jews he, now? He's he's made up with them. <laughs> that's right. I saw it was like so who who considered who convinced them Jewish people are okay? It was like some. Some he had like a meeting with some Jewish person and he's like I realized I think he saw Schindler's List or yeah, something. That, I don't know. Was some crazy. Maybe like he was a fucking Elden Ring Game Awards kid and whatever too. <laughs> the, Bill, yeah. the, the Bill the Bill Clinton kid. But Dig, I think that you um, there's no risk. I mean, why not? I mean, because yeah, you wouldn't get it removed. You'd probably love it. But I would never but get it in removed. the back of your mind. What I'm saying is, in the back of your mind, you look at it and you're like, this is fucked up. This doesn't didn't come out right. I don't want this. It's like okay, go get it removed. You know, that's all. I, I don't even worry because I would use PJ's guy who's brilliant. I'd have yeah. to go to Long Island to get them done. But 
so I already have a guy, hopefully. And you know, the only, my only obstacle, my only barrier is those guys, the really serious tattoo artists are sometimes reticent to tattoo people without tattoos. In other words, he would have to be convinced that he's going to do two Yeah, he doesn't sneaks. want to break your cherry. Are you scared? No, not for the pain? Yeah. No, not at it all. It hurts. Don't care at all. It hurts a lot. I, I will tell you that. It, it, like, that is no joke. It does. You have it's to understand, my to. first tattoo was on my back and went across my spine. It's Ooh, yeah. it, hardcore. And then <laughs> this one, ugly. I remember specifically <laughs> when they were getting to the I and the E and they were getting to my <laughs> elbow bone, it was bad. That's but I don't. I don't think it, it's not, it is, I think some people think it's, uh, I personally was like, this is more painful than I thought it was. It's tolerable, but this hurts, you know? Um, so, and some people go really deep. You got to look into all that. I think, I think PJ's guy goes deep. Um, but yeah, as long as you're okay with the pain and the and needles and stuff, and there's really like, what is the risk? Yeah, I'm okay with that. Yeah. Yeah. I Here's what's think. clear. You're going to get them. I think so. No, you're going, I think your so. gut knows you're going to get it already. I think what's really important for you is to figure out why this is such a, um, um, a stop, a, 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 a showstopper for you. Mm. It's, 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 and I don't mean that I'm, I'm, I, I know I'm going back to the same point and I'm not trying to just be a dick or anything, but that's worth exploring because from an outsider looking in your apprehension is unusually, um, strong for something that I think most people would say, well, just fucking do it. Like Colin's saying, do it. And if you don't like get rid of it, the fact that you're not in that headspace, I think that's more important than anything about a tattoo. Mm. Yeah. That's yeah. Good. I think you make a good point challenging me with that, Jeff. I do. I, I think yeah. there's also something weird. Like I should probably just get it because I would enjoy it, but there's also something holding me back maybe a little bit. That's like, look at this 50 year old guy trying to look cool. You know, like mm. the, it's, I mean, like it's you like, lame are you doing point. it? Yeah. Yeah. I see. Yeah. If you're doing it because you're trying to look cool, I think that's an important thing to wrestle mm. with. But if you're doing it because you genuinely go, this is me. Yeah, I think it looks cool. Yeah, for you. You do it for you. That's why yeah. I did mine too. Yeah. You know, it's because yeah. I liked I liked looking at this this iconography. I like it. You're never gonna be looked at as cool ever no, again. So. You're fifty. No, it's, it's over. over. It's it over. was over years ago, right. let's be honest. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's funny you say that, Jaffe, as as we close, I was reading it's it was sad, but and we don't have a woman here to represent it, but I was reading a story recently about a woman who's like regretful, like she it's not that she wanted to be cat called or whatever, but that she was Rem, she was reminiscing about how no one pays attention to her anymore because mm -hmm. she's of a certain mm -hmm. age where it's like she just she went from like he turning heads to like no one even pays attention to her anymore right that's and, right uh, i think yeah we're all we're all well beyond that age but there is that's a, i i if, if i ever have the privilege of being um asked back to constellations i would probably say i, I would want to discuss aging and aging in this culture um great topic because even e even that there there was a uh, i forget what her maybe it was jane seymour mm -hmm. some famous lady that was really hot back in the day who was on Oprah. And she was like, you know, I was so depressed once I hit like 35 because my value to society had been the way I looked and how sexual I could be. And I didn't build up anything else in my life to take the place of that. And when that fell apart, as it inevitably naturally will, I was left feeling like a total useless human. And so I, I think what you're saying about the cat call lady is, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, and even what you were saying about when you're a kid and you think, you know, things and you're like, you don't know anything, the, the way we look at older people in the society, and I don't mean just 50, but like 80, I mean, you've got these hard drives of data of, of experience and we don't pitch it to people as if that's a fucking resource, man that will help you get what you want. And instead it's like, Oh, you're fucking old. You're useless. I, it staggers me that we just treat that resource. Like it's useless. Yeah. And it's very gendered too. I mm -hmm. mean, you know, I yeah. like I'm 41, but I have a lot of, a lot of, a lot of women I've dated are like, like my, my age, you know, they like right. that I'm great. They like, you know, like I've been called like one girl called me into Asian George Clooney. We are not together anymore. But like, she was trying to really compliment me. Again, like, who the fuck she was a are keeper. you? Yeah. yeah, whatever. Yeah, <laughs> men, men like get to men almost get like this second act that I feel like is kind of 
robbed of women in, in modern society in Definitely. some way. Absolutely. Well, Absolutely. But what's yeah, funny about it is that because, like... Because I, I clearly love 50-year-old women, so, you know, like, it's not, not an issue for me, you know? <laughs> yeah, you like your cougars or whatever. And you know how to talk to them. Yeah. I mean, my my fiance is 10 years younger than me, you know? So it's like that we... We ben- I think we benefit in different ways from these things or we perceive to benefit and I think they often go in one direction but not the other like no one bats an eye that my fiance is 10 years younger than me but if I were the woman in that situation I think they would oh they would. absolutely you know and that's yeah. so that's that, there there is something yeah. inherently sexist about that yeah my, my, my girlfriend right now is 12 years younger than me too you know so I think Micah and her are, are probably the same age I right think. on yeah yeah, yeah they are if that's if that's the case 12 and 12 yeah. so all right my friends well and jeff of course we'll have you back i mean this was this was a great time i appreciate you guys taking the time to talk oh, to me always. today i i love chatting with you guys gene my goodness gracious so always good to see yeah, you yeah yeah the, the people demanded I, this and we delivered i want you to come on my show so we can talk about video games I know, we, we do, do that, that sometime soon yeah, yeah. okay yeah yeah I, I would i'll definitely tune into that i mean it's it's uh it's good to have this spe- specific combination. We'll definitely strive to have that again in the future. Do we have any closing comments? Let's go around the horn. Jaffe, any closing comments before we go? No, it was fun being here. I hope I didn't talk too much. Um, I love the show. I love the channel. Uh, thanks for listening and come see my shit. If you're interested over at uh, David Scott Jaffe, whatever on Twitter and YouTube and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, go support Jaffe. It's, uh, he's always welcome with us. Thank you for taking the time. Gene, Washington Post, etc. cetera. Uh, any closing comments, my friend? Yeah, uh, thanks for having me. I'm I'm glad to be on with Jaffe. I, I feel like that you know uh, this this was a good mix of personalities. Uh, and uh, yeah, just follow me on my ver- unverified Twitter at Gene Park. Um, <laughs> yeah. And uh, there'll be some interesting coverage for some big games coming up soon from me soon. So so st- stay tuned. Cool, man. Are they going to do the Washington Post? Like, are they going to give you one of those like affiliate links where they? or checks like you get that little square next to your name and all that it doesn't look like it I, I think i think because the verification doesn't really well you know what i think we're actually wrong because the our our company line was verification that no longer means like they're a verified person but then if, when you hover over the check it tells you what kind of verified person they right. are you know so i saw kind of funny they're all verified yeah, yeah. I, I don't oh, know if they yeah. paid or if they just because i know a bunch of companies were just given their if they were big enough i think given a yeah. verification and then like their trickle down verifications i, I have to Think that they were paid. That whole thing that is they paid so for because, fucking because Elon dumb. Elon was paying for Stephen King and William Shatner and LeBron James. Yeah. And if you're not like one of those iconic people, even if you are, like you probably won't get a check, you know, because there's a lot of people who are just, like play, PlayStation is unverified. Yeah, it's you know? crazy. It's it, it's to me, it's money down the drain, especially because as far as I can tell, getting the blue and the yellow check are exactly the same. Yeah, and so you can just get the blue for eight dollars a month. But I just, it's like I said at the top, it's full circle because uh, I don't want to pay for something that is so demonstrably bad for me. It's just, it's, I love Twitter in some way. I love reading it. I don't interact with it very much, but it's like my newsfeed. But I'm like, it's like I'm going to pay you for the honor. I don't fucking think so. Just on principle, <laughs> I don't. I'm not paying for it. Maybe with last stand, we would. It's gotten worse. I'm. It's gotten fucking worse, man. I. I. I mean, I. And I'm not a. I'm not a. What's his name? Muscator. But I used to love Twitter. And now it's just like, I mean, I, I liked the checks the way they mm. were. Cause I could, it wasn't that I was worried that someone was going to be imitating Gene, but it was, it was that I was like, okay, that person's done something. I'm interested in their comment. What, what have they done now? It's who gives a shit about it. You buy it now. Right. It's so fucking stupid. And everyone's like, oh, but Musk is a brilliant businessman. I'm like, okay, well, maybe he'll figure something out. Maybe but he this... was, but he's not a good. He's not good at running a social media company. And and he's that, really, that's it's a, really that's gone specific, downhill. That's a specific set of skills and knowledge that you need. And running a car company and running rocket science is not exactly the same thing. You know? Different. Yeah. Yeah, I, I I definitely agree with you. I think I think the heart of the attempt or what he's attempting to do is actually great. It's like this sort of like lowering the bar, democratization. Like no, because. Because the blue check situation was corrupt, you know, like there were people. What does that even what does that even mean? Well, because there were, how is there it corrupt? People would sign up. I think this is obvious if you look and I think there are studies that even did this. But if you look at people that didn't have check marks, like I'm trying to think, what was the guy from Project Veritas? Um, uh, James, uh, James O'Keefe. O'Keefe. O'Keefe James yeah. O'Keefe is a substantial political figure, right? And I don't mm-hmm. I don't necessarily care about him one way or the other, but there were stories about it. like he would he has like a million followers or something. He would sign up and be like, no, no check mark for you. It's like, are you kidding me? If the check mark is about authenticating who this person is and that they're a real person sure. who did something, why didn't you give him a check mark? And meanwhile, people with 500 or a thousand followers that did really very little, they wrote for Slate or something. They get check marks. I think it was I think he was trying to blow up what I looked at is and I think a lot of people objectively looked at as a, certainly a biased 
and gameable system, you know, um, very similar to Wikipedia in a lot of ways, you know, where like Wikipedia has demonstrable bias, too. So it's. um. Well, I guess if that was the goal, he did blow it up to the point that now it's meaningless. Right. Well, yeah, no, I, I, well, I, should, I think. But why not just get rid of him entirely then? Because what he's got now is stupid. I, I agree. Just I think that what they should have done. done. What, what, the, the, the tin, what, to, what Tinder does, you just put in your, your photo and your number and it's like, okay, well, that's that's Gene. You know, no matter how important or, or notable he might be, it's like, that's him. Okay. And he's that's fine. Right. He's losing sight of the commodity. Like, you got to commodify the talent there by letting them use it for free. Mm -hmm. That's the thing that he's like, you got to like make it so that it's so easy to use that it's second nature. You don't have, we're not asking for money. We should be giving you money if you're, you know, that, that would, Mm -hmm. that should be the mentality, I think. But uh, I agree. I think he bungled it, but I appreciate the spirit of it. And I appreciate, I'm not a Musk lover or Musk hater. I, I like Musk, but I do appreciate having some billionaire that's like not hoarding his money, but at least doing something with it. Like he, everyone makes fun of him, but it's like, I don't know. It's, he's doing shit. Yeah, it's kind of cool in a way. I'm sorry, Jeffy. I didn't mean to. I, there's an ask. No, I appreciate the guy. I just think there's some things where I'm just like, he seems like maybe it's just Twitter because he's fucked Twitter and I'm. And everyone about that, comes off worse anyway. on social media, so he's probably no exception. You know. Um, right. Hey, he can put shit in my brain. I'm, I'll sign up for his fucking oh, neural link. <laughs> I'll fucking see what happens. I want to see. I mean, that's amazing. And the boring company and it's, all sorts of other stuff. Like, the boring like, company is still my favorite. Yeah, I love that name. It's very, so good. It's very funny. Uh, Dave, closing comments. Just thank you to all three of you guys. I'm honored, privileged to have this conversation. I really enjoy it. And specifically, this this group is a lot of fun. So thank you guys. Yeah, thank you. And yeah, boys, thank you again for uh, getting together with me. And thank you all out there for your love, kindness, and support. Remember, you can support us on Patreon, patreon.com slash media, early ad free access. Leave us nice reviews on podcast services, etc. We'll see you next time for more. Until then, goodbye. Constellation is a product of Last Stand Media and Collins Last Stand LLC and is proudly recorded in the USA. The show was conceived by and is directed and hosted by me, Colin Moriarty. My co-host is my brother, Dagan Moriarty. The show is produced by Last Stand's executive producer, Dustin Furman, and is edited by associate producer, Ben Smith. All Last Stand theme music is by Ramon Narvaez and all of our graphics and logos are by Dagan Moriarty. As you know, all of Last Stand Media's podcasts, including Constellation, are fan-funded on Patreon at patreon.com slash laststandmedia. The following names are at the producer level on Patreon, our highest support tier, and we're infinitely grateful for your thoughtful and kind contributions to our independent endeavor. 